Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our Ignite Your Destiny broadcast, Hope for a Better Day. Here it's Sunday, late afternoon Sunday, here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. We welcome you around the world, wherever you're joined in from. Uh, we'll be going off the Bishop Greg Gill dash ever increasing ministries page tonight. So if you want to lift comments, uh, list comments, just list them on there. And uh, that will be great. Thank you for Maria from Sweden. Good to have you on. And uh, we welcome you. We speak blessing over you. And we're excited that people are joining us. I'm Natalie Barnhouse was on from UK. First, first one on, Bish. We had a UK fellow UK are on there. So there you go. And uh, <coughs> there's a Texan coming on right there. Kent from uh, San Antonio, Texas. I was just talking to him before I came on the broadcast briefly. And there's Darcy. Hi, Darcy from California. Good to have you on. So please share the broadcast. Help us get it out there. And <clears throat> it's going to be a powerful broadcast today. Excuse me. It's going to be a powerful broadcast today. And uh, I guarantee you, you're going to want to sow into this anointing quick. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to be ministering to people, going to be praying for people. We're going to be sharing the word of God, challenging you today. And uh, we're so blessed to have Bishop DeWar with us. He'll be on shortly here. And it's going to be a powerful broadcast, as it always is uh, when he's with us. And so I'm going to just put it up there. Please share the broadcast. And just wanted to shout out to all the Canadians, all the people from Canada. It's Thanksgiving Day in Canada tomorrow, so happy Thanksgiving to all our friends and family in Canada here. And uh, if you're listening in from around the world, please shout out these Canadians for happy Thanksgiving. And uh, it'll be good. It's always good. And so we're thankful for that. And people are just getting up in some parts of the world. People are just getting uh, getting going. And so we have many, um, the last few weeks, we've had several people from uh, 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 New Zealand and Australia tuning in. And so we're thankful for that. So they're, they're just getting up on that side of the world. And so I saw we have uh, Harvey on. Welcome from... Uh, from the greater Vancouver area. Good to have you on, Harv. And uh, thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Mel. Premla coming to us from Malaysia. Good. We got the Southeast Asia is on and we're ready. There's Natalie from, um, yeah, there you go, Bishop. Natalie and her husband, Dale, would like to connect. And uh, that would be great. So we're going to bring the bishop on here as you're sharing that. I've just been waiting while we're filling it up and sending it out there and getting it out there. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to wait for another moment. A couple things just to uh, Prof. Tess Vanita from UK. Good to have you on today. Uh, there's Miss Nadia. Good to have you on. Happy Thanksgiving, Nadia, over there in Ontario. Glory be to God. And uh, I want to uh, just let you know. If you um, are interested, you can go to Amazon.com and order my new book. I will, I will not. It's called, and you can get it through Lulu on that page. You can get it through Kindle on that. I got to send the bishop his actually. Now that I've released it, I got to get that over to him in UK. He already bought one before it came out, so. Got to get that shipped off to him. And uh, you can go there, and that is good. Oh, you're in Wales, Natalie. All this time, I don't know why I thought you were in the UK. Okay, you're in Wales. Good. Even better for the bish. And so you can go You can go to this website also, I will not ca. Just go to that website directly, and you can order my brand new book. And I just released it two weeks ago, two weeks ago tomorrow. And so that will be a great blessing. You can get it on Kindle if you want. You can get it off Lulu. You can get it off Amazon. And that would be a great blessing to help our ministry. It's my first book ever. And it took me 51 years to finally write a book. So I'm thankful and proud of it. And hopefully it will be a blessing to those that are able to purchase it and just get into that. So on that note, 
we're going to get off me and we're going to get on our guest tonight. And we're so honored to have Bishop Sirion de War. I love that name, Sirion de War. And uh, the Archbishop is in the house tonight. Glory be to God. How are you, my friend? Good to see you. I, I, I'm good, but I'm going to have to teach you Welsh. <laughs> yeah, I guess you are. Cause I, I, I say it like different. I don't know. That's my you, Canadian you, accent. I, I'm going to say you, you say it like just about every one of my American friends says it. But my, yeah. my name... My name in but you Welsh go by is, Kai, right? I go by Kai because my name in Welsh is Kerion. Kerion, okay. But everybody like struggles on. with that, so so well, it, that's a prophetic it's, word like carry on. People. Come on. <laughs> well, it, 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 C E I in Welsh is key. Okay. And my my okay. name well, translated into English that. is the keeper of the keys. Yeah. Well, thank you for thank you for teaching me that because I had no idea. So I learned something new today. So. Well, I, I'm going to teach you something else as well. Are you okay. ready for this? So, sure. hang on. So, Natalie Barnhouse. Yes. Is in Pontypridd, or Pontypridd, as most people say, because it ends double D. But in Welsh, double D is a th. That's where Tom Jones was born. Okay. So that wow. the world famous singer Tom Jones, or Sir Tom Jones, yep, as yep, we know yep. him now. So okay. he's bo he was born and raised in the oh, same wow. town where Natalie is. Wow. Yeah, and Wales yeah, is yeah. Wales is one of the four nations that makes up the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Yes. Right, so, yeah. so Scotland, England, and Wales make up Great Britain, and Northern Ireland added to us makes it the United Kingdom. Wow! Look, my wife's my wife's putting on here, Bishop, that her mom loved Thomas Jones. See, oh. her mom her mom was from Wales. Do, shall I tell you who was a massive fan of Tom Jones when he was with us? <laughs> Carmen, the gospel singer. Oh, is that right? Wow. And Lady G sent him a couple of CDs. Oh, and wow. we, we went down to, I think we, I can't remember, did we, I think we posted them from here, but I took Lady G oh, yeah. down to Ponty Preeth so she could oh, tell wow. Carmen, because they were very good friends. Yeah, so she could yeah. she could tell Carmen I was in Ponty Preeth with Tom John. Now, Ponty Preeth used to be up the road from where I lived. Because okay. I, I, I used to live um, the other side of Wales, because Pontypridd is the other side of Wales to me. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to digress. So to answer Natalie's question, because I saw in the comments when I was waiting to come in, she said, yeah. can I tell them where I fellowship? So I right. travel so much, I don't have a home church. But Natalie, right. yeah. I tell you what I'll do is at some point on my travels with my wife, I will make sure... Um, I'll make sure that we arrange to meet up with you whilst we're traveling. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So that would be good. I mean, I, I haven't met Natalie and Dale yet, but they've been they've been great, great. Uh, they become friends online, of course, and they've followed many broadcasts, and and they just have a beautiful spirit pastoring well, there in Wales. Well, and, we, uh, we we they they can't be here in my hometown, uh, in my home country, and me not make time to go down and see them. So look at this uh, right I'll, here. I'll. Yep. Well, we've been to Treforest. Half a mile. And, uh, mile, I, and a half I've, a mile. Wow. I've stood in the telephone box at the end of the road where Tom Jones used to live and practice his vocals. Wow. So, uh, we'd so love to. You just, you just got a speaking engagement, right there. Yep. We, we'd we'd love that. to. We, we, I'll, we'll, I'll have, I'll, I'll have somebody reach out to you this week, and we'll, yeah, we'll make a plan, Miss Natalie. But now, Bishop, you know me. I, the Bible says in Romans. As many are led of the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Yeah. I saw the prophetess name come up, which I believe she's here in the UK. Yeah, she uh, is, is it she's prophetess a, she's, yeah, Vanita? Uh, Vanita? Vanita, yes, I'll pull her up here. The word of the Lord came to me as I saw her name. We're in dangerous wow. territory already. Okay, let's go. Shaka, Abasa. Sure, sure, sure. Come on, somebody. It's happening. And the Spirit Woo. of God told me to tell her <laughs> there is a... Um, I gotta find the words right. It's like there is a blockage happening in her ministry at the moment. In and it's almost like there's she's hearing the spirit of God, but not like she used to, not in ways that she used to. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit is literally about to pull the plug on the dam. Hallelujah! Come on. And there is going to be a tremendous flow. And I'm saying that because wow. the things that she is about to see by the Spirit of God, 
yeah. the things that she's about to experience Whew. by Jesus. the Spirit of God. When God reveals <laughs> the truth uh, or truths to her and things flowing straight out of the throne of grace, straight out of the Spirit, unfiltered, untapped, um, I'm trying to find the words, but when she begins to speak the things the Spirit of God is showing her, people are going to struggle to comprehend what she's seeing. Wow, that's big. But there will be such a witness in their spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I want to say this to you before we even get going tonight. Don't be afraid to speak what you see by the Spirit of God. Whoa, good. Because, just because someone has never heard it before, does not mean it's not true. Right. The purpose of the hearing is what makes it a revelation to them. Wow. And God is going to give this, this, uh, this lady unbelievable revelations specifically to do with the 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 um the personal lives the the personal areas of people that refuse to um to share what's going on refuse to open up to be transparent wow. she'll be standing in the uh, like i i saw one occasion in the spirit and i know this is something that will happen in the future she'll literally be standing in a in a queue in a bank or like a post office and god will begin to speak to her about the intimacies of the heart and the intimacies of things that are happening in the people serving Uh, and god is going to reveal the the, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? The hidden sins will be revealed, well, not for the purpose of exposing, but for the purpose of being able to speak into a situation, speak into uh, relationships, speak into lives, lives well, that are happening. And the, 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 the prophetic insight given, the words of wisdom, the words of knowledge, the things that are being revealed are being revealed specifically for the salvation of that soul, specifically for the saving of the unsaved. And God is going to really open a door of seeing things by the Spirit Mm. specifically to win that person. And it is going to be a completely different dynamic of the ministry that she's used to, the ministry that she's experienced, the ministry that she's she's uh, even down to to um, to prophesying and and just speaking by the spirit of God, speaking under the utterance of the spirit of prophecy, is going to take on a completely different dynamic to how she's experienced the word, the 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 spoken word, the prophetic word. And it's it's. I I I'm going to stop right there. That that's. Well, I'm going to if I carry on, I'm going to add something that's not of the spirit. It's going to be in my flesh oh. as I'm trying to interpret what the Holy Spirit is saying. So oh. let me just leave that word right there. But that's literally as I saw a name pop up on the screen that came straight out the Spirit of God. Wow. Here, right she, here. Look what she said here, Bish. Exactly right, man of God. All you're saying, 100%, God has spoken to me these things, confirmation, hallelujah, hallelujah, and oh, hallelujah. God. So you don't need to say anything more because it's done in Jesus' name. Glory be to yes. God. Thank you, Lord. Satori. And that's what, and people tuned in today, that's what you have to understand. When, when prophetic words are given, they're all always supposed to bring confirmation of what God has already spoken to us. Yes. When we when we give a word, it's not to give you direction of something if we if we say something, then hopefully it will confirm what God's already saying to you. Yeah. Because we're not here to give you directional words and tell you this and tell you that. We're here to confirm the word of the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so that's very powerful. Prophetess Vanita is actually part of our Ignite family. And uh, she's originally from Uganda, Bishop. Oh, wow. Yeah. She's from Uganda. Her husband's from UK. And uh, right now they've been in UK because of the lockdown. 
but they were just in they're just in uh, Gambia they were just in Uganda um, a couple of countries over there and then they've just returned now to UK and uh, wow. <clears throat> beautiful precious people uh, yeah thank you Holy Spirit so so I want I want you to share this broadcast get it out because already we've only been on for a short time and Holy Spirit's already moving I want you to get that seed in the ground today hi Elizabeth welcome to you happy Thanksgiving Day to you and uh, Sebastian down there on the east coast of Canada. And I want you to sow into this anointing today. I want you to uh, just be blessed. This, this is such a blessing. Every time we had Bishop Kai on with us, uh, I think this is the third or fourth time. I'm not sure. Last time we were together, it was the first week of August. I know that. And uh, so we're always blessed. And he's such a blessing and touching lives around the world. Many of you t- tuning in from all over today, I see New Zealand, I see Australia, I see Malaysia, I see uh, USA, I see India, I see Canada, I see all kinds of different places. And so I see UK, I see Wales, I see uh, London, I see, I don't know, many, Denmark, Sweden today. And so thank you for tuning in. And I'm telling you, we're in for a treat today. It's going to be a great time. I know it's, it may be morning, maybe afternoon, maybe evening. I don't know where you are in the world. It's 11 o'clock at night, 11.30 at night almost for Bishop Kai over there in UK. And, Early uh, compared to the last one we did. Yeah, last time we started at 3 a.m. for him, and we kept him until like 6 a.m. He saw the sun I, come up. So I watched the Woo. sun come up here. Yeah. Have, have you ever had that on another broadcast, Bishop? Come on. No, not on another broadcast. <laughs> I've, I've, I've done an all-night service. <laughs> Yeah, where yeah, I've, yeah, I've preached until the sun came up, but uh, well, we're never... honored that we got the first sun br- the break of dawn <laughs> service, the sunrise service with Bishop Kai. <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a young lady watching. The uh, name is Candy Farmer. Yes, I um, saw Candy. Yeah, I'm yep, I'm hoping you, she's still on. She's right. Yeah, she's right uh, there. Candy is facing a a um, major decision that she has to make in her life. Jesus. I. I I don't know what it's about, and I don't know what it's for. The Holy Spirit just said she's got to make a major decision. Mm. And the Holy Spirit would just simply tell her, before you make that decision, just wait. Well, Don't don't make the decision yet. Isn't that a tough one to take, eh? Yeah, <laughs> just, just, just wait. God has got something in store, but he just needs you to wait. Because well. he's got to line some stuff up and put some stuff in place. Okay. And, uh, you know, sometimes we, th- th- there's a tendency to, to, you know, we want God to move, but we want God to move now. And, and oh, God right. has to put stuff right. in place to be able to move because he's, st- yeah. you know, things still have to happen and, and yeah. other people or other things need to, to line up. And, and, uh, sometimes we can, we can miss God by circumventing the process. You know, I've, I've, um, I'm sure you've heard me use the analogy that I, I've quite often used in situations like this. Um, it's it life with with living by the spirit is like two passengers riding a motorbike, taking a curve. And if you know anything about motorbikes, when when two people are riding the bike, both have to turn into the curve the same way. If one go, if one turns into the curve and the other um, and the other turns the or leans the other direction, it'll cause the bike to to skid out from underneath them because there's a complete imbalance in the 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 positioning of the the weight to make the turn. And sometimes we can be God's trying to 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 get us to lean into the curve to go one way, and we're leaning another, and we miss God in the curve. And uh, so. Uh, I'm just telling you, uh, uh, Candy, I don't know what it is, but I just hear the Holy Spirit saying, just wait. Wow. Uh, so, sometimes our our desperation, our impatience, our our um, impulsiveness, can, and I'm guilty of this. I, I'm, I'm speaking from experience when I say sometimes we're so desperate to see the things of God that we can end up giving God a helping hand and miss everything completely. Yeah. So and, uh, and I've been so there, good. done that, so... I'm just praying that uh, you'll just receive that word and whatever the decision is you have to make, please just wait on God. No. Don't don't so rush into something. Don't rush into the decision. Just wait on God. 
Uh, he's got everything that you need. And, and let God do what only God can do, because what only God can do is going to be enough. Right. Wow. So good. Saturi and My brother, I am fired up in the Holy Ghost tonight. Yeah, just let it flow. That's beautiful. Well, let me let me say this to everybody that's watching from Canada. Happy Thanksgiving weekend. I did put it yes, a tie to look smart to, to wish you all a... <laughs> thank you for celebrating with us, Bishop. Oh, you're welcome. I'm, uh, as I told you before the broadcast, I'm one of the few men I know that can actually tie their own bow tie, and I, I, do, have, <laughs> I do have quite a selection of bow ties, much to my wife's annoyance because she, she doesn't like them. <laughs> but uh, Now, did you, but did you hold them. on to them until they came back, or did you get them when they came back? Oh, no, I've I've had them for years. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I I've got a huge collection of of ties and bow ties, and um, I don't like to wear the same tie twice. If you know, uh, you know, good back Canadian to back. Canadian so, loves the tie. Now, see, the oh. Holy Spirit's been talking to me about Harvey. Oh, really? Good. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, I see, called him I, today. I, I said, Bishop's going to be on. You better be on this broadcast. I believe there's something for you. Wow. I kept looking at his name on my... So so everybody watching, forgive me, okay? If I keep looking oh. to, to the side... Yeah, you're looking at the monitor. I'm looking at the monitor, just so you know, because people think I'm not paying any attention. I'm watching his name. Two or three times wow. he's, he's left a comment. It's come up. Yes. And every time I see it, I, I, just, I can literally just see... Now... Ooh. You're gonna have to help me, because you know you you know these these men and women and I know, know Harvey, Harvey you, and I talk almost every day. Like we're very good friends. So it, it, this uh, Harvey's a businessman. Yeah, Harvey's a, he's a business coach. And business coach. Yeah, yeah. Well, then the word is true, because yeah. what I saw was him going to a completely different level of educating people in business. Like I'm Come talking. On, that's right. I'm talking, yeah. you know, kind of top line CEOs, huge Come companies. Oh, I have a, oh, but there's I have one a company, there's one business that he's going to, I don't know how it's going to happen. I'm not trying to work it out. That he's going to end up doing some work with. And the CEO is going to sit with him and mm -hmm. say to him, listen, we got offices in like 30 or 40 different countries. And we want to pay for you to, I, I want you to go teach this in every one of our offices, in every country we're in. I want you oh, to go word. speak to, and this contract is going to be worth millions of dollars. Wow, Harv, come on, that'll change everything. And I, ju I, I just that. saw, as he goes Woo! up, I then, the, it too, then the, the, the dollar value on the contract just keeps getting larger and larger wow. and larger. Wow, 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 wow. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I mean, I... I, I used to do business coaching myself. I haven't done any for That's years, nice but I, I can just, I'm, I'm seeing contracts, but there's one company in, in specific, uh, uh, in particular, in, I've lost the ability to speak the Queen's English tonight. Look at me. There's, there's one company in particular that is going to offer him an international contract to go teach in every one of their offices. And when he sits down and works it all out, this contract's going to be worth, it's going to be over a couple of years. On, and this contract's going to be worth a couple of million dollars, wow. and it's going to be like thirty, maybe forty different countries wow. uh, when it happens. So just keep keep trusting God, Jesus. Harvey. Keep plugging. Yeah, but I'm telling on. you, God is already He already knows that there's something very strategic happening <laughs> in the the spirit concerning his life because the Shut clientele that are starting to to approach him now very different Jesus. to the kind of clientele he's used to. But God is preparing him to go into the arena of, of coaching CEOs and chairman of the wow. board and wow, and, and wow, really wow, taking wow. him up to that the highest level of 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 corporate. In fact, the the one one of the one of the the keys to understanding is when he has the conversation. One of the first places they'll mention is going to Florida, wow. and that will be the. Remember what I'm telling you now, Harvey. That will be the thing that makes you go, this is it. This is the word the bishop spoke coming to pass. Because one wow. of the first places they mentioned going, we wanted to go to one of our offices, and the office is in Florida. And I'm, wow. I don't know whether it's I don't know whether it's just me. It might be the spirit. Um, I definitely hear Florida. I think I hear Miami, but I could be wrong on that. It might just be me over-egging what the Holy Spirit is saying. But there's definitely... 
definitely um definitely florida and yep. uh and it's going to be yeah i'm i uh, yeah, he's receiving it this is come on Herb. happy now, thanks you know, being on that one <laughs> bishop i i i'm i i i want to i want to I, I want you to do me a favor because normally when we teach or whatever, you, you just kind of leave me on the screen on my own, but I want you to stick with me tonight so that they get to sure. see the two of us. Okay. I, I want to share something, and I, I'll try and be real quick if you don't mind because all of this week, I've been thinking about something very significant, and I began to teach on this on Wednesday night. I've been before the Lord today asking what you want me to share, and he brought me back to this. Every preacher I know preaches Hebrews 11. I don't think I've heard but maybe two or three preachers delve into Hebrews 12, and there's a passage of Scripture in there I want us to cover. But before I do, I, I want to I ask everybody, including yourself, have you ever got lost in a forest? Because I, I used to live very close to this massive forest. And I can remember getting lost up there once. And as, as the night falls in a forest, it gets very, very dark. I mean, with the tree covering and all that lot, it's darkness on a completely different scale to something I've, I've never been used to. And the problem with the darkness is this. When somebody's calling out your name to find you, because of the trees, because of the, the positioning of, of the trees and, and the way that sound reverberates, they're calling from one direction. And it sounds like they're calling from 360 degrees. You, you just can't pinpoint where the sound is coming from. So it's very, very difficult. For, and those that have been lost in a forest would, would, um, would know what I'm talking about. It can sound like the voice is coming from in front of you and the voice is coming from behind you. And it's, it's because of the way that, that sound carries and, and reverberates between the trees that it, it makes it very, very difficult to find your way back to the voice that's calling you when you're lost in a forest. I'm saying that to say this. We as a body of believers, the church, have now become so accustomed to so many different voices speaking, so many different preachers, all saying different things, very few of them in agreement over the Scripture. In fact, I will be so bold as to say very a, a, a large percentage of them not even preaching what the Scriptures say because they preach a feel-good message, they preach a message that's born of the soul, born of the emotions, not born of the Spirit of God, that in hearing all of these voices, it's become very, very difficult to pinpoint the voice of God calling when we're lost in that wilderness. And uh, the Holy Spirit drew me to a passage in, in the Scripture, and, and for those of you that have your Bible, it's, it's very simple to find. It's in Hebrews 12. And this is what it says. Hebrews 12, 25, we're going to start. I'm just going to read four verses. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape, him, uh, he, escape who refused him who spoke on the earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven whose voice shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. And there's, there's just one sentence in there that really stuck out to me. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. And as I was listening to this, 
as the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, as I was reading this word, I became increasingly concerned in my spirit, increasingly concerned in my heart. Because I believe there are many people that have refused the voice of him that speaks. And it's not because they've chosen to willfully refuse. It's not because they have decided to turn against what he who speaks from heaven is saying. It is because just like those that have been lost in the forest, they are so confused by where the voice is coming from that we do not understand the voice of the Holy Spirit at all anymore. And I, I say this with great respect and with great reverence and great love for my brother preachers, my brother bishops and pastors and deacons and elders and, and all of those called to the preaching of the word. We have become so accustomed to saying things that other preachers say, to preaching messages we've heard from somebody else, to, to, to delivering a feel-good message that speaks to the, the emotions and the soul of those that are listening, that we are no longer listening to find out, is this the voice of the Spirit speaking? Is this the voice of God? And in doing so, we are rejecting him who speaks from heaven. The Bible says in the book of Revelations, let he that hath an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying. And I know so many people that ask me, believers, that tell me they hear from God. And then in another conversation, ask me, how do you know you've heard God's voice? Well, if you've heard from God, why are you asking me, how do I know if it's the voice of God? The answer is simple. We are refusing the voice of him who speaks from heaven. Now, because of that, we are entering into very dangerous territory where we are speaking things that sound spiritual, but they are not scriptural. I can prove it. Everybody I know has at some point in their life known somebody that will tell you when you're going through a difficult season, God only helps those who help themselves. Bishop, I'm sure you've heard people say that. God only helps those who help themselves. That's not even Many in the Bible. Times. Right, exactly. That's not now it sounds scriptural. Sounds like the kind of thing that, you know, it, it's there in the Bible. It it sounds like it's not even scriptural. Of course, God helps those who are unable to help themselves. That's why they need help. If you could help yourself, you wouldn't need God. Right. Come on. I keep telling people all the time, God asks you to do the extraordinary because you can do the ordinary on your own. In him, through him, we do the extraordinary because without him, there is nothing extraordinary about what we do. He makes us, when we do things that are supernatural, it's not because we are supernatural. It is because he comes upon us the super, for want of a better expression, supernatural comes upon the natural and makes us supernatural. So, of course, God helps those who can't help themselves. Silly thing to say. He, he doesn't help those who don't help themselves. What a load of tosh, as I would say here in the UK. But the reason I, I br bring this scripture up is this, and I'm going to upset a lot of religious folk tonight. Are you ready for this? You see this All thing right, here. Okay. You see this thing here. This is not the word of God. Yes, you just heard me right. Bishop Dewar said the Bible is not the word of God. It contains the word of God, but it is not the word of God because it also contains the words of Satan. It contains the words of Pharaoh and Moses and Joseph, Ruth, Esther, and so many other people. Plus, 
if this was the word of God, the infinite God of the universe has reduced himself to 800,000 words in the King James English. 66 books, 1187 chapters. There you go. Yep. So this cannot be the word of God. But this is the Logoi from the Logos. A living mm. word from yep. the living word. So good. Now the reason I'm saying yep. that is for you to understand this. The whole purpose of this Jesus. The reason God left us his book. Remember, God, as my spiritual father would say, God sent his son, but he left his book. The reason God left his book is so that in, in, in you learning what he said, you get to understand his voice. The whole reason we have this text of the Bible is to know the voice. The more you read it, I tell people all the time, Bishop, I'm, I'm sure you you would feel the same way when they tell me, oh, I know God. You know God, but you have no idea of what he says. Right. So good. Yeah. Don't, don't tell me you know God when you don't know his word. Don't, don't tell me you, you don't know uh, that you know God and you haven't got a clue what God has said. And quite often I can hear it in their, in their prayer. I can hear it in their voice. I can hear it in the things they say when they pray things. They pray and ask for things. You, If you knew who you were, if you knew what God's word said about you and you knew who you were in him, you wouldn't ask him for stuff he's already given you. You wouldn't ask him for things you should know are already yours. And I use this example. I know my earthly father. I've had a long-standing relationship with him, almost 45 years now. I know my inheritance because it's already been given to me. I don't have to wait until my father dies to receive my inheritance. I've already received it. But I also know my father's words. Why do I know my father's words? Because I know his voice. And the thing is this. I was telling a young man this the other day. Because he asked me, how do I know God's voice? I said, you know, when you were born, you didn't know your mother's voice. You didn't know your father's voice. Every voice sounded exactly the same. This is why children are so easily deceived by evil men and evil women. Because every voice sounds like a voice of comfort. They don't hear harm in a voice. They don't hear danger in a voice. They don't hear deception in a voice. They just hear a voice. But the more that young man got to spend time with his mother, got to spend time in the presence of his father, the more he began to recognize that voice above every other voice. The Bible says, my sheep know my voice, and another they will not follow. Jesus talking about us as his sheep. But the only reason I know his voice, the only reason I know the voice that speaks from heaven, so I know not to refuse him, is by spending the time I need to, to become so familiar with the voice that, like Christ said, my sheep know my voice and another they will not follow. And yeah. we are so busy in our everyday lives that we are rejecting the voice of him who speaks simply because we're not making the time to hear it because we don't have the time for the intimacy required to develop the relationship that he is the voice. Jesus. As a child growing up, I had no option but to spend time with my parents because upon them I depended for everything. I needed them to change my diaper. I needed them to feed me when I yeah. was hungry. I needed them to, to uh, in the UK, we say burp them, you know, when a, a, a child's out of yeah. milk and you're uh, trying yeah. to get the, yeah. the wind out. And I had, to, uh, I had to do this. My friend, Pastor Clint Ross, is watching from South Africa. Bless you, my yeah, brother. So Good I'm to on hear there from him. South Africa, yeah. Because of my dependency on my parents in my infancy for everything, I became accustomed to their voice. We don't approach God in the same way. We reject the voice of him who speaks from heaven because we have no dependence of, de dependency upon him for everything that we need. We have no dependency of, upon him for everything we, we, we for, for the the food that we need to feed us, for the clothes that we need to clothe us. We don't place our dependency, we don't place our trust in God the way a little child would place their trust and their dependency in their parents.
That's why Jesus said, suffer little children to come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In other words, he said, I just need you to be dependent upon me like a child is dependent upon their parent. Yeah. I need you. So I'm concerned, Bishop. I'm really concerned that, and, and people see it when they, they, they see us flowing in the prophetic and, and hearing the voice of God and all of these things, and forgetting yeah. that you're the prophet of your own life. Right, yeah. You don't sure. need me to prophesy. You can speak yeah. the Spirit of God, or speak what the Spirit of God is saying, because every believer is supposed to hear the voice, is supposed to know the voice, but not every bo every believer is flowing in the voice, fl yeah. uh, uh, flowing in hearing the voice, because we are not listening anymore. Oh. We have got to a point. We, we have got to a point. We're so busy trying to mainstream the move of God in our churches. We're so busy trying to be relevant to our neighbors, relevant to social media, relevant to this, that, and the other in our life. We're so busy trying to look appealing, so busy trying to look prosperous, so busy trying to look all manner of different preach, things preach, 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 that yeah. we have no time well, to be intimate with God and recognize Jesus. the voice. Jesus. And the scripture says, as we read in Hebrews 12, if those who were here on earth could not escape it, how much more can we not escape the one uh, talking about Jesus? If they could not escape from the one who was here on earth, how much more can we not escape the one who speaks from heaven? God speaks his word from his throne and it echoes through the earth. But the question is, are you hearing? Are you hearing? Are you hearing what the Spirit is saying? So good. Revelation, as we've quoted already, let he that hath an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Which churches? You, me, every single one of us, because we are the churches that make up the church called the body of Christ. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is continually speaking, continually speaking to us, continually speaking through us, continually speaking over us the question is are you hearing what's being said yeah, are you missing uh, th there's a young man very significant um role that i have in his life and i love him dearly and i've i've watched my uh, my heart aching to watch him go through something in the last couple of weeks where he believed that he heard the Spirit of God that certain things were going to happen and they didn't happen the way he thought it was going to happen and he said to me where did I go wrong I said you believed the voice in your mind because it sounded so much like this is a God thing you mm -hmm. believed the voice in your mind yeah because we know that a good thing is not always a God thing right correct yes and quite I've, often I've heard it taught many times Bishop like you have well, if it's good, it's it's automatically God. But but God sometimes has greater than good for us. Come yeah, on, so much so. But I said to him, what what one of the the dangers is this? When we hear that voice in the mind, yeah, well, and it sounds like it's God speaking. Oh wow! Well. We prejudge the outcome of what's going to happen, and we have to learn. Because I said to him. Were you 100% certain? Did you, did you have a piece about what was spoken? He said, well, no, I was a little confused. I said, right there, that's the right. voice of the enemy. Exactly. There's no confusion with God. Yeah, right. If there's confusion coming with what's Jesus, been spoken, you just hear the voice of the enemy, or you just hear the voice of your flesh. And yeah. we are so unaccustomed with the voice of the Spirit, so unaccustomed with him that speaks from the heavens, that you hear the voice of your soul speaking and think it's the Spirit of God just because it's the voice that comes from within. So we've got to reconnect with that voice, get to the point where we begin to hear the voice of God in such a way that it is impossible to deny that is the voice of God speaking. Yeah, so good. It is impossible to deny that is the voice of God speaking to me.
But I want to encourage, and and that's really all I I wanted to share as we minister tonight, and and I know the Holy Spirit's got a lot in store, but are we so intimate? You know, I think about Moses atop of the mountain in Exodus 32 and 33. You know, he's been up there 40 days and 40 nights. The children of Israel think, well, you know, he's been up there a long time, so... God must have killed him because he hasn't come back down. But what they failed to understand is the level of intimacy that Moses had with God. Mm -hmm. That's why he was up there so long. God was talking to Moses in a way that, aside from his son in the Garden of Gethsemane, we've never seen in Scripture how God spoke to another man in such a way. We know that God spoke with Abraham and cut covenant with him. We know that God spoke with Job. We know that God spoke with other other prophets. And, but, but none of them had a level of intimacy that Moses had with God. And the proof of that is this. It says in, I think it's in Exodus 32, that when God got so mad with the children of Israel, because, you know, Aaron's down in the valley, forging the golden calf for them to worship because... They've now decided Moses must be dead. God's brought us out here to kill us. You know, we would have been better off being slaves still in Egypt. And God tells Moses, you go down there and deal with them, because if I come down, I'm going to kill a lot of them. And the Bible says that Moses reminded God of the covenant that he had cut with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is the passage that gets me. King James says, and God repented of the evil that he sought to do Israel. Moses became so accustomed to the person and the presence of God, so attuned to the voice, so familiar with the voice, and God so familiar with Moses' voice and Moses' presence, that Moses actually causes God to change his mind. Because, you know, people tell me all the time, oh, God never changes his mind. And I take him straight to Exodus 32 and go, yes, he does. God changes his mind all the time. Are we so accustomed to the voice? Are we so intimate with the voice? I've been praying for weeks now. God, I want to be like Moses. I want that. I want that level of intimacy. I want to know the voice so that when I was a child, my parents had a, a holiday home, and it's about eight miles from where I live now, because I used to live like a hundred miles away from where we are, or from where I live now. And we used to come down here. We used to come down here almost every weekend and through the, the summer holidays and the school holidays, because it was right on the beach. But it was, well, I say right on the beach, it was, you know, up on the hill. It was about a kilometer from the beach, the, the actual property. And my father to this day has a way of whistling that cuts through the noise of every crowd. And my brother and I, we would, you know, my brother was uh, like five or six and I was 11, 12. We used to go down on the beach and, and, you know, play on the beach like brothers do and all that kind of stuff. And there would come a point when my father would whistle and it was for us to know that our food was ready. It was time to go home. And above the noise of all that was happening, above the noise of everybody else on the beach, above the noise of the cars and the crowd and everything else, my father would literally stand at the back door, put his finger in his mouth, whistle, and we would hear that whistle above everything else and know it's time to go back. Now, I put it this way to make it, you know, sound churchy. It was time to go back to where the Father was waiting. And I want to say this. There is a voice cutting through the noise, cutting through the, the, the hullabaloo of everyday life. There is a voice calling out from the heavens, as we've just read in the Scripture. And you're not hearing it because you're unfamiliar with the voice. So everything in this Bible, everything is given to us to know his word so that in knowing his word, we understand and we recognize his voice. 
This is why we read the Bible. This is why we study the Bible. This is why every believer should be knowing the Word of God so that in knowing His Word, you become familiar and you recognize His voice. And I, I am praying, Bishop, in, this last, in these last days, because we are definitely in the last days, that people will not miss what the Father is saying. People will not miss what the Spirit yeah. is doing simply yeah. because they don't recognize His voice. Yeah. So I just wanted to lay that out there for because oh, I think that's powerful, a, a good place powerful. for us to 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 really be in the spirit of God, yeah. especially as the Holy Spirit is speaking so freely to so uh, to to us and and sharing so much with us, um, especially as He's speaking through through you know words of wisdom, words of knowledge, and people ask me all the time, well, how can you hear so clearly? I know the voice. It's yeah. not that I know it so clearly. It's not that I, I there's something special about me. I just know that voice. Right. Yeah, I just and want to touch on one quick thing, Bishop, while you were doing. Uh, I, I just was reminded of uh, Colossians 3.15, where it says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you are called to peace. Yeah. And so, so in the original language, when you break it down, it says that peace rule as an umpire. And so we have to be guided by peace in our decisions that we make. And yeah. a lot of people don't hear the voice of God or miss the voice of God, like you said, because they don't have that peace in their heart. And, yeah. that, and that's a very simple thing. People say, well, how do you know if it's God? Well, first of all, do you have peace? <laughs> that's a good place to start because, yeah. because if you're restless in your heart, you probably know you shouldn't move ahead. In, in my personal life, Bishop, there's, there's two or three men that are spiritual fathers in our lives. And if we're ever going to make a major step in our life, we always bounce it off them because they're covering in our lives. Yeah. And and we trust them. You know, Proverbs says there's wisdom in the multitude of counsel. And so we may be, we may be peace in our heart and, and we'll say, this is what we're sensing. What are you sensing? And then maybe they'll share and, They'll totally feel a yes on it, or maybe they'll say, well, here's what I'm sensing, and then we go back and ask the Lord for guidance or whatever. And, and so it's very important to have peace in your heart, because I, I know that I'm the most stressed out person when, I don't, when I'm not at peace. Yeah. Some, day, some days people are asking me, well, how are you today? I said, if I could just have a, a one day with peace in my heart, I'd be a happy man. You know, I've had those days. I know, I know you probably haven't because you're spiritual, but I, but I've had those days, and and I think most people have those days. And uh, this is this is very powerful because we will never hear the voice of God if we don't start with the peace of God in our lives. Yeah. That the peace that passes all understanding down in our heart. You know, that's what we need to have. Do you, do you know what? Bishop, there's, there's something that gets me. I, I shared this. I've shared this example a couple of times in the last couple of weeks. The Holy Spirit really blew my mind over something, um, and it relates to. I can. I, I see what Dan's written in the comments about. Um, we have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside us. So for me, it's not focusing on hearing, but tuning all the other voices out. I, I understand that one, but but this is this is what fascinates me about hearing the voice. Is we're constantly looking. In, in, in the Queen's English, we would say within and without, meaning internal and external. We're constantly looking for the voice without, the external voice. Imagine this, in God are all things. Because this blows my mind. In God's first thought was every thought. It, it, That's so because, deep. That's because the, the Bible shows us he's the beginning, the end, the first and the last. Yeah. The author and the finisher. Yep. In God's first thought was right. every thought God thought. And past, present, and future. <clears throat> well. In God's first thought, you and I were part of that thought. Long before we ever set foot on this planet, we yeah, were powerful. part of that thought. Yeah. Okay? So in God is yeah. all things. All thoughts, all life, everything. Everything is contained in God. And somewhere in God is our universe. 
And somewhere in that universe is our Milky Way. Somewhere in that Milky Way is our galaxy. Somewhere in that galaxy is our planet called Earth. Somewhere on that planet called Earth is a country called Canada. Jeez. Somewhere in Canada is a... Now, you're in Alberta, if I remember rightly, aren't you? Yes. Yep. So no, somewhere yeah. in Canada is a city called Alberta, and somewhere in that city is the house that you are living in, and somewhere in that house, you're sitting on a chair looking at a computer talking to me, and somewhere inside you is God. And it took me a while to comprehend. So in God are all things. And in all things is the universe, in the universe is the Milky Way, in the Milky Way is the galaxy, in the galaxy is the planet, in the, ga in the planet is the country, in the country is the city, in the city is the house, in the house is you, and in you is God. And we're so busy looking for the external that we forget the voice we need starts within. Mm. Yeah, so it's good. not just a case of tuning every other voice out, and, and I agree in some part with what Dan said, but it is a case of turning ourselves in. Turning back inward to hear the voice. Turning back inward to know the voice of the Spirit. Because it starts, the Scripture says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And, and even when you, and I know you're a biblical scholar like myself, even when you understand the original text, you understand that it's not talking about the Holy Spirit will literally come down on you. It literally means to come up from within. Yeah, come out that's of what you, yeah. that's what right. up on means. It's two English yeah. words to come up from with from within yeah. and th and the, the flowing out on you. Yeah, so powerful. So <laughs> there is a voice. She took up us, uh. We 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 don't need to look outside for the voice of God. We need to right. turn our hearts, turn our our focus deep into that place inside us where God is. Right. And look for that voice because that is the voice that is speaking to us. But because we look at things like the scripture where it says, let him that speaks from the heavens, the voice of intimacy starts deep in your heart, deep right. in your spirit, deep inside you. And yeah. when you are intimate with that voice, the voice of the God, with the, or the voice of God within, you become intimate with the voice of God without. But we're so busy looking for the external, very few are turning their heart, turning their spirit to the voice of God speaking from within. But imagine that. Imagine the, imagine the, mag, the, the, the magnitude of God. In God are all things. And in all things, somewhere is our universe. In that universe is our mil a galaxy, a Milky Way. In the Milky Way is our galaxy. In the galaxy is the planet, and the planet is a country, and the country is a city, and the city is a house, and the house is you, and in you is God. Jesus, wow. Shabbat Shalom. I tell you what, Bishop, I don't know about you, but that's enough to mess up my mind, and I, I, I'm pretty educated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty well educated and pretty academic, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that just... Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's serious. Yeah, well, it, the, I mean, he, we know that he's the author and the finisher. I mean, it was... It was done before it already began. Yeah. Ooh. Imagine that, though. In God's first thought were all thoughts. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. That, do you know that? Do, do you know what that means? In God's first word was every word. Jesus, come on. There are things that we speak. The the prophetic <laughs> utterance that came forth by the Spirit of God tonight came uh, in God's first word. Yes. Wow. Well. Come on. So here we are echoing Jesus. A, a voice of the Spirit that has been spoken millennia ago. Jesus, Jesus. And we are only just seeing the manifestation. The on, we're only just seeing the realization of what God has spoken before all time. Jesus. There's a lady watching us. Yeah. Bishop, you know me. I, I like us just to go with the spirit. I'm I'm so yeah, blessed if you just let's, let's allow me the freedom to do this. There's yeah. a lady watching us. Her name is uh her name is Carol, I think. Let me find Carolyn. It. Carolyn. 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 Yeah, yeah she's from yeah. California. She's a great woman of God. Well, 
I don't know what she's going through. Yeah, come on, speak it out over. I, I don't know Hallelujah. what she's facing, but Holy Ghost, shut up, Osinto. When I saw her name on my screen, come on, so to I I saw. Let me just let me try and describe the picture. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I saw pages of a book. Jesus. Pr like oh. printed book. Yeah. And I saw a hand just rubbing across it and the printed words disappearing off the page. Wow. And the Holy Spirit said, Tell her I'm about to rewrite the story of her life. Shut up, also. So I don't know what she's going through. I don't know what, Ka Carolyn, I don't know what you've been through. But Jesus. God is literally about to rewrite the story of your life. There's and a lot there of people is, you just need to take that. Glory be to God. I, I'm, I am, I, I, there's a, there is a completely different dimension Jesus. of spiritual prosperity attached to the story God is is beginning to write, and uh, I don't know. I don't know if she's in ministry or business. I, I I just I really see something happening in. Uh, no, she's waiting to be launched this year. She's heading towards full time ministry. Well, I was just about to say I I really see something happening very significantly yeah. in a well, new ministry. Thank and you, Holy Ghost. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, there's just, I, I don't know, there's something about, there's something about this lady. I, I, yeah, uh, Bishop, I, I agree. Uh, it, I agree. It, it, is she under you? Uh, is, is she submitted to you? No, but, but she's very, she's very much walked relationally with us. Okay. Well, I, I, I want you to keep me connected to this word. Yeah. Because there's there's something very significant, yeah. And I'm there's a there's a unique grace. I I can't move away from from. You know, the, sometimes the Holy Spirit just grips me, and it takes a while for my brain to filter out the the other voices trying to put me off. Yeah. There's a very significant grace on this young lady's life. No, oh, I agree. She's powerful. And. Um, you know that Bishop, you prophesied over her in in August when you're on with me, at the end of July. Wow. And she told me, she told me just the other day, she wrote me and told me that she listened to that prophecy this week. And it, it was so significant in her life that it helped it helped her so much. She's so touched Thank right you. now, even she just said. There is a <clears throat> Yeah. There is a very unique healing anointing upon her. Oh sha. Yes, I believe that. Cup. Very unique. <laughs> and and hear me what I'm about to say. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. When we talk about a healing anointing, most people refer to a healing of the physical body. Come on. The grace on this young lady. Yeah, come on. There will be physical manifestations of the healing. Yeah. But there is a there is a grace on this young lady to heal the very soul. It's true. She will see minds restored, like Alzheimer's, dementia. Wow, I believe it. Thank you. Holy because God. I I've always believed this, and I've yet to to know anybody that can convince me otherwise. <laughs> I've believed that that Alzheimer's and dementia are straight out of the pit of hell because in losing in losing the mind someone loses their identity it's true and in losing their identity they lose their soul yeah. and i agree with that because my dad has huntington's which is the same family yeah yeah same, and, and it's like yeah Jeez. but there's a grace on carolyn's life yeah yeah, specifically is. in the, she she's going to see very significant healings in these two specific areas wow. of, of of alzheimer's and uh and dementia Holy because Ghost, the you. grace that is on her is for the healing of the soul wow so if i could I, I can remember talking to bishop mark sharoni years ago 
and um, and he said something to me right and at the time i didn't agree with him and i told him i didn't agree with him but the more i've thought about it the more i've talked to him about it the more i i've um my god look at that yeah thank you Holy Ghost. the more i've uh, the more i've talked to, to to dr sharona about this the more i've come to understand what he was saying and the only way I can describe it is to use a term that he used. But this lady is going to be a physician of the soul. Oh, Jesus. You know, we, we have, we have uh, uh, physicians, medical physicians. And, but this lady is going to be, the grace that's on her is to be a physician of the soul. Oh, so powerful. And uh, and I'm astounded that I mean to read those words. My grandmother died of this. Now, yeah. my yeah. word, that that's incredible. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. That is yeah. incredible. My, my sister incredible. here in my, my sister here in Wales. You know, Bishop. You know me. I, when I, I get on a roll, yeah. we're on a roll. Natalie, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Come on, Natalie. Yeah. Her and her husband, Dale, is her husband's name. Are going to see the catalysts wow. of a very significant outpouring of the Spirit of God birthing in their ministry, birthing in their church over the next... Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start to happen before the end of this year. Wow, thank you. That there, are, there are signs for... And their, their community, their faith community, I don't like the term church because uh, yeah. when we talk about, you know... I know we're the church. Don't get me yeah. wrong when I say that. I just don't like to use the no, term church. Um, their community of faith yeah. will see tremendous growth because of what's happening. But there's um, there's something very significant in the area of prayer that needs to happen to be the thing that births. births Sorry, I'm 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 struggling with my words because I'm kind of excited. There is something in the area of prayer that they need to be doing to be the 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 birthing point of what God is is setting about to do. But they before this year is out, we will begin to see or they will begin to see the moving of the spirit in a very unique way very different way to what they used to, uh, to to used to experiencing and it it's going to be the catalyst for a very very significant move of god in their in their fellowship in their faith community in the church whatever term we're going to use um but it it's it's there's something to do with prayer right now they need to be doing it and they're not doing it and I don't know whether it's because the Holy Spirit's not really spoken to them about it, or, or um, you know, they, they they're just seeking the Lord about what. But he, he's going to show them in the next few days, few weeks, something very significant in the area of prayer, and that's going to be the catalyst. There's a young lady watching Stephanie Levine. I think it is. If I yeah, my Stephanie. if my pronunciation of the French yeah, is correct, yeah, that's right, Levine. That's right. Yeah, we and, just had we just had lunch with her. She lives in Ottawa, Canada. We had and, lunch with her uh, last Sunday. I see. I see a very very. Uh, help me, Holy Ghost. Jesus. I I can see multiple properties. Well, wow. residential properties. And everyone I'm looking at has got her name written on it. Wow. And I'm talking, I'm not talking about apartments. I'm talking about significant family homes, multi-family homes. And each one is, now in the UK we would say detached. Each one is a standalone property, has right. its own yeah. lot. And I, this is something she's not involved in at the moment. But I see a, a very uh, swift move into property ownership, rental properties, 
and and property development and uh and there's there's going to be a tremendous flow of and and the holy spirit told me to to tell you this stephanie there's going to come a time very soon when for a period of time property prices are going to drop tremendously i saw it the other day by the spirit of god i it's not a a uh, a a stock market crash it's not an economic crash i just see properties being devalued for whatever reason probably you know the, the post pandemic effect and and when it happens if you're in the place where you you're in this uh property ownership people will be asking you why is it our price our values are going down and yours are going up and there is i i don't know whether she's been thinking about this uh, about going into property ownership where the lord sh- oh there we go you just answered my question wow the lord keeps showing me this but this is this is it this is <laughs> This is going to be she's been praying about being able to sow into kingdom work and sowing to the ministry and and wanting residual income and this is it this yeah. is uh this is it this is how the holy spirit's going to move <laughs> her into it in fact <laughs> Stephanie I'm telling you now come on <laughs> look beyond your nation because wow. you'll own properties in several different nations. Ooh, so kapaha. Wow. Don't limit yourself <laughs> to Come Don't on, limit yourself Stephanie. to which I I don't know which country you live in. I'm assuming it's Canada. Yeah, she's in Canada. But don't limit yourself to the country you just the country you live in. God will open doors in two or three different nations. Oh. North America being one of them. I There's a particular country in Europe that she has some affiliation to, some link to it. I don't know whether it's a familial link, uh, always wanted to go there kind of link. I, I don't know what the link is, but I can see the European Union flag. There is a link to a, a There is a... a, a, a something in her life that has a particular european country and i don't know what the link is there but uh well i was just about to tell you but the holy spirit has told me that one of the properties you'll own is in that country whichever country it is but it's definitely within europe Um, and i don't know the i don't know the link i'm not going to try and guess the link i i just i know what i see by the spirit of god and and uh there we go france well did i not say the european union yeah you did so she she talked to us about france last week when we were with her bishop so this is so tracking it's unbelievable but i know this i know now that she said it i know it's not paris mm-hmm there's a there's a familial link somewhere in France but I know it's not Paris because most people would assume all Paris France there's a right. a, a lady Kendra Sykes yeah. Yeah, I Kendra. watching I, uh, I don't know what she's going through I I don't try and speculate I don't all I know is uh all I know is there's a, a massive financial need in her life and she's really been she just been asking god god give me a sign give me a sign give me a sign and tonight the sign is this god is about to bless you like mm. you could not imagine and whatever the need is it'll be met in one day thank you jesus i i don't know what i don't know what the need is that that you need but god is literally saying tell her i'm going to i'm going to it's a debt that's what it is. God is I don't know how he's going to do it, Kendra. All I know is God is about to wipe the debt. Literally wipe your slate clean and let you start all over. Okay, and enough. and in doing so, you will unlock a flow of finance in your life that you have been desperate to see. You've been hanging on and hanging on trying to 
just trying to get by, trying to get out of where you are, get out of the, the debt that you're in, get out of this circle of every time. It, it's it's almost like things are going really well, then suddenly this the, the enemy sweeps in and your finances are back low and it's and it's it's just been like a vicious circle over and over and over. And the Holy Spirit told me to tell you tonight, he's about to wipe that slate clean. And and uh, they're going to contact you to tell you your debt's been paid in full. And don't even worry about it. Don't even uh, don't don't try and work out how it's done. Just give God yeah. thanks that it's been That's done. Yeah. I, I want I want people that are tuning in. I want I want you to sow into this anointing. Come on, God's doing something very powerful here. People people keep saying they can feel the tangible power of God on this broadcast. I want I want you to sow into it today. What God is doing and and. Uh, we're just we're just flowing, allowing Holy Spirit to use Bishop Kai here, and and uh, so please share this broadcast, get it out. God is moving right now, and and we we don't even talk about. He just told me he was going to share about Hebrews twelve. That's all we talked about. We only had less than a minute before we came on together, yeah. and so so it's just it's just pure Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, Stephanie, just to go back to it, um, she said Normandy, Bishop North of Kai. France, yeah. So that's that's the place she feels in her heart. So yeah, she put that in the comments. For, yeah. for those for those that don't know the area, or don't know the, uh, France well, Normandy is a region of France up in the north uh, northwest. <laughs> it's actually um, uh, the closest part of France to Wales, um, and where the originally where the Breton people are from. The Breton were were the um, the, the Gauls, as the Romans called them, Gaul is is uh, uh, was a uh, the Gaulish language was a derivative of Welsh because they were they were Welsh emigrants to that whole area. Um, so I know that area very well. I I've spoken uh, many times in in Normandy. My my uh, there's a <clears throat> just before you get to the the region of Normandy, there's a little uh, little town, I guess I would call it, on the the Opal Coast, which is the north of France, called Le Touquet. And uh, my parents used to take me to Le Touquet when I was a young boy just to go to breakfast because mm. we would hop over and then carry on down to, to Normandy. And that Normandy is where I practiced my French. Um, uh, 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 mes Français, c'est ne pas bien, but I, I speak enough. Um, no, well. But there we go. Bishop, I'm going to, I'm just going to throw this out there. Uh, sure. Lady Di, you, you need to raise the level of your expectation to a, a different level. You keep asking God why he's not doing things, and the Holy Spirit is telling me you're not asking enough. Just you're asking yeah, God you for... Keep going. Need, I'm just going to make sure she's on. I can see her. I've seen her name come up. She, you're That's asking God for things that are too easy for him to do. <clears throat> you need to raise the level of your expectation. Jesus. You need, to, you, you need to start asking God for the impossible. Because right now you're asking God to do stuff that he, he, God could quite easily do, but you could do it yourself. There, there are... I'm not, I'm not one to... You know, I, I respect the bishop and the la and the first lady, so I'm not one to go into their personal stuff. Not that they've ever shared this with me, but there there are things that I see that, you know, they're believing for. You know, things to be paid for, things to be taken care of, and and uh, Lady Di, I I just hear the ho the Holy Ghost telling me you 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 um Jesus. you're not asking enough. You know, you keep telling the Holy Spirit you really want to move the house. You want to move house. You want a you want a bigger house. You want a better house, and uh, and you're not asking big enough. You go. It would be like, uh, how would I put it? It's like asking God for a condo, and He wants to give you a palace. And uh, you, you've just got, you've got to raise that level. You've got to raise the, the level of, because raising that level of expectation is going to raise, it's going to force you to stretch your, your faith, to believe for the, the, the things that are impossible. I'm going to give you an example, Bishop, 
for you and Lady G. So um, there's a prophet I know in South Africa. And uh, there's a prophet I know here in the United Kingdom. And the two are not connected, but they're connected through my life. And people don't understand what I mean when I say that, but I'm about to explain it. So I was, I was up with the one prophet that, I, uh, that is one of my dearest friends. A lot of people know him, uh, Prophet Hubert Angel. And um, when I was with him, the Holy Spirit spoke to me about a house. Now, I've lived in this county where I live in Wales for its, I've worked it out, it's 18 years in January that I've lived here. And uh, I've tried to leave here five times, tried to, to, to pack up and leave five times. The last time was a year ago, May. Was it a year ago, May? No. What year is it now? April. April 2020, I tried to leave. I, I was going to go take a, uh, uh, I was going to come out of full-time ministry, take a job in politics, and go work that and move about a, about 100 miles east of where I live right now. And every time I've tried to do something like that, the Holy Spirit has shut me down. I just closed the doors, everything stopped. And... Uh, Trying to make a long story short. I went up last November to go to Prophet Angel Studios, knowing that my last attempt to leave here has failed. And when I'm up there, the Holy Spirit gives me a picture, and this picture of this house. And I'm looking at it thinking, I mean, this, is, this house is enormous, you know. It's got a huge orangery at the one end. It's it's like a mansion house. And I I I thought I am I seeing things in my mind's eye, or is God actually sh revealing something to me? I, I'm just Bishop. Forgive me. I am going somewhere. You 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 know I, you, I I'm like I'm a good preacher because we stop at every tree on the journey. Um, but you you'll see where what I mean when we get there. And uh, and Lady Di will as well when when we get there. And I began to look, and I I called Lady G, and told her, you know, I'm up here. The Holy Spirit just gave me a picture of a house. And I found it. I I was awake half the night scouring the internet trying to find this house, looking at, uh, you know, I I knew it was in Wales. I found the house. It's about four miles from where I live this huge mansion house. And how I found it was, I found it through the realtor's website. Right? It's this big house. You can The main road is miles from the house, and you can see the house from miles away. It's massive. And that night, the Holy Spirit said to me, I'm going to give you that house, and I'm going to give you 2.5 million pounds to pay for it. Well, the house doesn't cost that much. I, but as I as I did my research, I realized, well, you know, if we if I move to that house, I'm going to need to build a studio at the back, so I'm going to need extra money to, to do all that. I am going somewhere. Just for those watching, just track with the bishop a minute, okay? And I began to pray. Fast forward to a couple of months ago, and I'm sitting here. I'd arranged a call with a prophet from South Africa. Right? And I'm sitting here, and he calls me, and he says to me, Bishop, I am, I hope you don't mind. I, I know we're just talking and getting to know each other, but I'm seeing, I'm seeing a mansion house. And he begins to describe in intimate detail, even down to telling me the position of the windows, where the, the, um, the pillars are at the front of the house, where the master bedroom is in the house, which without... No, and I said to him, man of God, i I, I got to tell you this now. Everything you're telling me is from the Spirit of God because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a picture on WhatsApp now as we're talking. And I sent him a picture. 
and everything he described was on a piece of paper because I had the property particulars on my desk whilst we were talking. I was looking at what he was describing. And then he talked about the same amount of money the Holy Spirit had spoken to me last November when I was away. And most people would think this is absolutely nuts what you're talking about. That you're telling me the Holy Spirit's going to give you multiple millions of pounds or multiple millions of Canadian, because that's what I think it's like two dollars, the, the the two Canadian to the pound at the moment. So that's like five Cana- five million Canadian, four and a half million Canadian, something like that. Right? But because a prophet of God spoke to me about it. Even though I was with a prophet when I had the vision, he he didn't see what the Holy Spirit was showing me. When a prophet that I had no connection to, no way of knowing what was going on in my life, no way of knowing what I was now believing for, came and spoke this word and described in intimate detail the property that I was looking at, literally as we were on the phone talking, had it there on my desk. God got my attention. And in in my getting my attention, he said to me these words, you need to raise the level of your expectation in what I can do for you. Because I've been looking at moving house for a while, but I was looking at some four or five bedroom house just up the road from where we are, which would not have met my needs, but was bigger than where I currently live with, with my lovely new wife. I'm saying all of that to say this. There is a house that your wife has got her eye on. And she keeps looking at it, thinking, God, I would love to live in that house, but doesn't believe God could give you that house. And Lady Di, if you're still listening to me, I am telling you now as your friend, as your brother, you have to raise the level of your expectation not the level of your faith. You have to raise the level of your expectation in what God wants to do for you. So tonight I'm telling you this, you are not asking enough because you're like me. When I, you know, we're, we're, I'm stuck at the moment because I've been without a car for like a month because of, you know, my, my car decided to explode or whatever it did when I was traveling up the airport to go to Nigeria. And I've been waiting to find out, can they fix it? Can it still be fixed? And just today, just today when I was walking the dog, something happened and the Holy Spirit said to me, are you going to raise the level of your expectation, what I can do? Because I'm like, God, just give me the money to fix my car. Or because or, or f- I don't know what, what needs to be done. Just just find a way to fix. Or, or let me buy this little, I've been looking. You'll laugh, Bishop. I was looking at buying a little Fiat 500. You know, like these little tiny bubble cars. I mean, I'm six foot four and a half tall, you know. But I fit in it. Nobody else can sit behind me, but I fit in it. And I've been looking at buying one of these things just to keep me around. And as I was walking the dog and talking with a friend of mine when we were walking, the Holy Spirit said to me, what do you want? I said, I want, I, I want my Range Rover because I like my Range Rover. And he said, which one? I said, I want a new one and I want my other one. I want the two of them. I'm not prepared to give up my old one like it was. I want my old one fixed because I got a plan for that. And I want a new one. And the Holy Spirit said to me, see, now you're raising the level of your expectation in what I can do because that I can do. But you telling me, well, you know, if you could just find it in you, God just, you know, we just need a couple of thousand dollars to come into the ministry so that we can just buy this little guy. I could do that in the blink of an eye, but I don't want to do it because I'm waiting for you to raise your level of expectation of what I can do. Right. And, and right. that's what the Holy Spirit just told me about your wife. You need to believe that God can give the inf- Bishop, this house is so far out of your price range, it's not even funny. If we look at things in the natural, but I don't look at things in the natural. Mm -hmm. There is a, I'm going to, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Should I say this or not? There's a property here in the town where I live. 
right? that another man of God is building. And I was walking past it one day and the Holy Spirit said, I'm going to give it to you. And I'm like, what? He's building that to build it, be his church. And the Holy Spirit told me, he'll never finish it. I'm going to give it to you. From that day to this, and this is a couple of years now, they've never finished it. Every time they start work on it, they run out of money. So they do a little bit, then they stop, then they do a little bit, then they stop, then they do a little bit, then they stop. And I've really been praying about, we need a, you know, we need to set up a proper office and we need a better studio and I want somewhere where we can have people come in and record. And, and you know, like Pastor Benny Hinders, he has services in Texas and Canada uh, and, and Los Angeles, well now Florida, on a Monday night and they record it for TV and, and I want to take our media ministry to a completely different level and and I want to be able to have you know services there whether it's a church service or whatever and I thought about it and thought you know what instead of me having to spend all this money that would be the perfect building I have never told another living soul I haven't even told my wife so everybody's hearing this I'm sure she's watching hearing this for the first time tonight and I'm walking my dogs today with my friend, talking to him, praying with him, trying to nurture him in the Holy Spirit a little bit. And all of a sudden he stops and he said, I don't know why, but I need to tell you this, the name of the pastor, that church that he's not finished building, I'm about, the Holy Spirit tells me he's about to give you that building. I said, yes, he is. I believe that with all of my heart. There are people watching me now, watching you and I now. You're trying to work out what you can do to get the thing you believe in God for. And God's trying to get it to you if you can get yourself out of the way and just believe the things he's saying, believe the things he's showing you. And it's not happening because your lack of expectation in what he can do is the very reason the door of blessing is closed. So I'm encouraging you, if that's you tonight, this afternoon for those in America and Canada and that side of the world, the morning for those in New Zealand and Australia and other countries, if that's you, you need to raise the level of your expectation in what God can do for you and raise the level of your expectation in what God is wanting to do for you and start believing God for the impossible because the possible you can do on your own. But I believe it. Bishop, has, has Lady Di talked about moving house with you? We've had several conversations about many things, yeah. Yeah, we've we've talked about we've talked about uh, keeping this home and and acquiring another one as exactly. as a as a rental property, you know, yeah. or moving well, to another one and renting out this one or what whatever, you know. So, well, that that's yeah. a good plan. Yeah, we, let let's work with that one. Like 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 I said about my Range Rover, I want to keep the old one and I want yeah. the new one. There we go. So God. The bishop and the oh, first lady. We're, we're holding on to like houses and lands, right? Yeah. And uh, we already have a another house that we own, but we've had all kinds of issues with that lately. I mean, this is this is very much a word for us, Bishop. I'm sorry, I'm breaking down, but no, mind you, let it go. It's been so hard for my wife and I lately. We haven't, we haven't told hardly anybody. But... Sorry, I don't mean to be emotional. Yeah, my brother, you... Listen. We're carrying a lot and we're under a lot of stress and pressure. It's like we... we it's almost like my wife put on there, we, we don't know what to ask anymore. It's like, you know, I'm... I'm using such a man of faith and doing all that. And 
we're trying to help everybody all the time and yeah <laughs> there, there's a word in there I, I, bishop you know you're my brother and I, I tell my family this all the time. The only time you need to apologize is when you've done something wrong. So don't you dare apologize for being who you are and for being human. Because I, I don't think people realize what it's like for preachers to go through the stuff that we go through. Bishop, I came off the other night off the broadcast. I said, I don't care if I do another broadcast again. Broadcasts are always great. They're always Holy Ghost. And I was like, I don't care if I ever do one of those again. That's not that's not who I am. That's, just... shall, I, shall I tell you something? I, I want to encourage you. As you know, Lady G and I went to Nigeria not long after our our wedding um, you know the services were fantastic the, the reason we were there but with the hell that we went through to get there and the, the final straw the, the final straw for me being my, my car drove 200 and something miles no problem at all I get 25 miles from the airport and we're now sitting on the side of the freeway. Didn't even know we were going to make the plane. When we came back from there, we went through hell just to get home. And Lady G could tell you, I, I sat in Nigeria and told her, I'm done with this. I am done with this. This thing called ministry has nearly c killed me. This thing called ministry has nearly consumed me. And I felt so low. And I'm pouring my heart out with the whole world watching. That night, when we were in Nigeria and I just poured it out, I said to her, do you know what? I've come to the conclusion, watching us struggle like this, watching us go through, because we had a fight like I don't know what just to get married. Then we had a fight like I don't know what just to get all the stuff in place to go into Nigeria. We had a fight like I don't know what just to make it to the plane. And I sat there 48 hours before we, we were due to come home. And I told her, I'm done with this. When I go home, I'm packing the studio up. I'm selling all the equipment. I, I can go get a job in politics. I can go get a job in, in administration. I can go get a job in sales. I don't care where it is. I'm, I'm just going to get a job. I'm done with ministry. You know, I told you uh, in one of our conversations. I, I, I'm done. I, I'm, yeah. I've never felt as broken as I did that night in Nigeria. Jeez. When I came home, I have locked myself in my office for the better part of a month. Didn't want to speak to people. There were days that didn't even want to be close to my wife. And we've only just got married. Yeah. Because I felt so broken <clears throat> inside. Yeah. And the funny thing is, we got home on the Friday. Come Monday, when I was determined, I'm, I'm not broadcasting. So, we had a few little issues here at home. I postponed the broadcast. And you know, once a week I do a prayer broadcast at 3 o'clock in the morning in the UK. I could not shake it. I, I, I Every time I try to switch, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm, not, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I, I'm give it a couple of weeks of postponing it. And people will get stop tuning in and all that lot, and then I can just I can just dump the news. I'm done. I've left the ministry. I've packed everything up. I'm done. And I could not, could not shake the feeling. I've got to get up and pray. So I got up and I did the prayer broadcast. Come the following Monday, postponed the broadcast again. 
Still couldn't shake that feeling. I had to. Had to get up and broadcast. And I did the prayer broadcast the second week. And in my brokenness, in my, God, I hate the thing that you've called me to do. I got to this point I loved doing what God wanted me to do. But I had nothing left in me that wanted to do it. I hated this thing that God has called me to do. But I did not have me I did not have it in me to leave it. And I am telling you now as true as I'm standing here, and if I, if what I'm saying is not of the Spirit of God, then he is not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am telling you now, it is those moments when everything in you is telling you, give up, and something in your spirit said, I cannot give up. I cannot be anything other than what God has called me to be. You have opened a door in the spirit and the enemy is fighting like hell to make sure that what has come out of there, like he fought with everything in him to make sure that Daniel did not get that answer. The enemy is fighting like I don't know what right now because he knows what is going to happen when that money hits your hand, when that flow of finance hits your life, when those doors and those opportunities open up. And all I can tell you is this. Don't ever give up because there are too many people that need you both. There are too many lives waiting to be changed by what the two of you have to, to bring. There are too many people waiting for you to cross that line in the sand. And my brother, it might not seem it like it right now, but I promise you there is going to come a day in the very, very near future where you're going to call me and say, Bishop, I don't know how it happened, but Lady Di and I, we became millionaires overnight. There are properties people are going to get. And it, right now it's difficult to see it because we don't see those people in our life. But there are people going to put property deeds in your hand. You will have cars given to you to the point that you can't give them away fast enough because everything that you have had to do without, everything that you have had to sacrifice, everything that you've had to scrimp for, everything that you've had to save for, everything that you have had to struggle for when nobody else saw it, everything that you've been through is everything God is about to bless you with. And I want to tell you this, Isaiah 45 says this, concerning my sons, Command ye the work of my hands. The Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you from this day forward, Sunday the 10th of October, you better start telling God what you want him to do for you and watch him do it. I'm telling you now, my brother, Lady Di, I hope you're listening to me. I really hope you're listening to me. This day, mark this day in your 10, 10, 21. This is the end. No more want, no more lack. If those renters don't pay up what they owe in the next seven days, you watch God move them and somebody will offer you more than you're asking. Raise the level of your expectation in what God can do, you, do for you, my brother. And you better start, you know, the Bible talks about calling things which aren't as though they were. Yep. I, I believe that with all of my heart. Yep. But see, there, there's got to come a point when we truly understand whose we are and who we are in him. Right. When we don't speak things in faith, we speak things from the finished place. 
see, we, not just you and I, but believers in general, we speak things, that we, we say, oh, I'm speaking in faith. You're not speaking in faith, you're speaking in hope. We hope God will change something. We hope God will turn our situation around. We hope God will bless us. We hope, uh, we, we, we hope, uh, you know, we, we hope for the blessing. We hope for the, 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 the new house and the new clothes. And, 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 but hope has no certainty. But there is a difference. See, the Bible shows us when you speak by faith, what does it say about faith? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. In other words, it is the materialization of the things you were hoping, God might. The evidence of things unseen. What does that mean? Evidence is, you got to see the evidence. Well, see, when I speak in faith, not hope, when I speak from the finished place, when God speaks from the finished place, what he says has to come to pass. So if God says, that black wall is white. You better believe the, the wall is white. When God says, I'm giving you a new car, you don't have to hope. God's giving you a new car because he's already commanded someone to bless you. Elijah spoke to the widow at Zarephath. The instruction God gave him was this. Get up, go leave the brook Cherith because Elijah was getting real disobedient. He didn't want to go because he knew... Jezebel was after him. God had to dry the book up where he was to force him to move. Okay? And, and I see this is what the Spirit is, is doing in your life. There is a brook cherith in your life that the Holy Spirit is forcing to dry up, to cause you to move. It's a spiritual thing. It's to cause you to, to move to a new place in God, to move to a new place in the Spirit. He says, Go thee to Seraphath. I've commanded a widow to bless you. To take care of you. Elijah gets up, goes to Zarephath, meets the widow. She doesn't know what, God hasn't spoken to her. She hasn't got a clue what the prophet's talking about. Why? Because the command to care for the prophet was in his mouth. God sent him to her with the instruction that would cause the prosperity that would care for him. I think about, uh, you know, when David saw uh, Bathsheba and had her husband killed, he, wrote, he went back to the general carrying a letter from the king, had no idea he was carrying his own death sentence. No idea at all he was carrying it, the warrant of his own death. You, my brother, Lady Di, you, my brothers, my sisters watching me now, listening to me, however you're connecting, you are carrying the very decrees concerning your life, concerning your future, and those things are not happening. Your faith is not being exercised because you're not speaking from the finished place and you're not decreeing the things that should be as if they should be or you're not decreeing the things that are not as if they should be not in the voice of hope but as one speaking because we have got to get to understand this the word of god in your lips the word of God from your mouth is just as powerful as when God himself speaks it. And we have to start speaking the completed word of God, the finished word of God concerning our lives. So now when you drive past that house, Lady Di, don't ask God, could you give that to me? Thank God that he's given it to you and you're just waiting on the manifestation. Thank God for the wonderful neighbors that he's going to put around you. Thank God for the people that are already commanded to sow but have not heard the instruction by the Spirit of God. Thank God for the people that are going to bless your ministry not because you're hoping thank god in the position of knowing we have got a 
massive flow of finance in this ministry. We have got businesses being sown into this ministry for us to live off the profits. We have got all manner of different things that are unlocking the flow of finance, that are unlocking the flow of favor, that are opening the doors into property ownership, opening the doors into whatever it is you want to get involved in. When you speak it from the finished place, when you speak from that place of grace, the completed place. It, Lady G could tell you, every time we're out now and I see the new shape Range Rover, I just go, there we go, look, they're driving my car. And I'm not saying it to be in jest. I'm not saying it as, well, I'm hoping for the day that I get mine. I'm literally telling them, you're driving my car. You're living in my house, but I thank God that house has got my name written all over it. So my brother, I know it's been a struggle. I didn't know until tonight, but I do now. I know it's been a struggle, but everything, everything you've sacrificed, the things that, I mean, the things you've given up for your kids, the, the everything, you're about to see. And it, do you know what's going to be blessing? It's going to come from the people you least expect it to come from. In fact, there is somebody that did you very, very wrong financially. And even as we're speaking right now, there is a niggling inside them to put things right. Now, I, I, I'm not asking what it means, who it is, nothing. I just know there's somebody that's done you wrong financially. And they are not going to be able to rest until they put it right and put that money back in your hands. My God. Is a sacco radio. I ain't gonna even gonna come close to what God's gonna give you. Double for your trouble. Ain't even gonna come close. There's a young lady watching us right now. She commented a second ago. Uh, see if I can find her name. There it is. Serena. Serena McNew. Do you know much about this young lady, Bish? No, she's been on some broadcasts, but I, I don't know her or anything about her, really. I don't know if she's in the beauty industry or has a connection to it or what, but I see a, a chain of salons with her name, just the word Serena written above the door. I see lots of them. I don't know whether she's thinking about getting into that business or thinking about buying into a business, or but uh, I just see lots of... There's something to do with the... Uh, the um, you know, like beauty salons, but the beauty industry. Wow, well, look at that. A lot of money was taken. It breaks her heart every day. Mom, mom used to cut it. I, I just, I, I can see salons, and I'm talking multiple, uh, with her name Serena written above the door. So I don't know whether that's God 
the Holy Spirit showing that he's about to restore it and the salon or, or she's going to get into that line of business. But whatever it is, there's great favor in that for her. Great favor in that for her. Jessica Jansen. Holy Spirit just wrote prosperity all over her life. Woo! Wow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. People, please sow into this anointing. Wow. Shut up, oh, so, so. I'm uh, so, 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 so good. Yeah. Oh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This, you know, the Holy Spirit is amazing. There's a lady watching us. Has been having pain in the kidney regions of her back. And uh, hasn't been to get it checked out, doesn't really know what it's, uh, what's causing it, just knows that it's been last few days an intense pain in the kidney region and uh, it wasn't actually a problem with your your kidneys at all is that there was something wrong in the uh, ovaries but the pain was kind of manifesting in that area and you weren't sure whether it was your back or but as we've been flowing in the spirit I I felt the pain leave Just gone. There's a a right shoulder injury just being healed. There's a um, a heat in that shoulder. You can the person with the the shoulder injury can feel it now as I'm speaking. It it's like a it's not like a burning, but there's an intense heat in the right shoulder and a a long standing injury just being healed. Man, I love the Holy Ghost. at that. Natalie says, I've had pain for 13 years in that area. I've been told it's referred pain from the ovaries. Waiting to see a consultant. Nope. Not anymore. Tonight it ends. James Anthony Woods. Come on. You know him, Bish? Very well. I was just with him in Michigan two weeks ago. I just talked to him about two hours before this broadcast. Minister? Yeah, powerful. Yeah, he's part of our he's part of our network. He's he's a him and his wife are wonderful people, yeah. 
I don't want to say anything. You just tell them. <laughs> oh, you, you you don't need to say anything. I just the Holy no. Spirit told me that. Uh, yeah. They need a new building swiftly. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah, he talked to me about that today. Glory be to God. Uh, you, you're looking at the wrong size and the wrong place. That's why you can't find what you're looking for. You're Come looking on, for what you think. No. Yeah. My brother, you're looking for what you think is what God wants. You better, <laughs> ask, you better ask the Holy Spirit because the thing that you're looking at isn't big enough. You're, you're, Ooh, thinking of, uh, you, you're looking at buildings based on your growth plan. Wow. Not the Holy Spirit's growth plan. Holy Ghost, wow. You, you, you got to remember, Peter preached for two minutes and 38 seconds and 3,000 mm. people were added to the church. But it's yeah. uh, you. You definitely. I don't know which city you're in. Michigan, you said. Yeah, Flint, well, Michigan. Flint, yeah. Michigan. Ah, oh, see, the water. I I know Flint because of the water problems there. But yeah. I just hear the Holy Spirit telling me, a man of God, you're looking in the wrong part of the city. That's why you can't find. He, he's talked it now. If I'm wrong, you correct me, okay, Bish? But he, okay. I get, I get the feeling from what I sense in my spirit, he's talked to you about a. a about needing a new building, but hasn't found it yet. Yes. Because you're looking in the wrong part of the city. And I don't know, I, I don't know which side of the city you're on, but you need to go west. Mm. You'll find it. Just go west a bit. There is a much bigger building. So, I... I, I get the sense in my spirit that James ah. wants to do other stuff from the church, not just the church. Like, you know, hundred percent, hundred percent. I, I, I get this idea like, um, like, a, you know, kind of daycare facility and some form of children's education and, and stuff like that and outreach into the community and, and a, yeah, totally. a being able to, to, um, you know, being able to 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 to, to reach the, the the less fortunate and and you know homeless people, people with drug addictions and alcohol addictions and and that kind of stuff, and you're not you you're not finding it. There we go. I'm a teacher, and you're not finding the the building that you need. There is a build. There's a strip mall with this man's name written all over it. Woo! Shabba. You can have Shabba. multiple buildings in one facility to be able to do wow, all wow, of wow, the wow. different things. So powerful. So beautiful. But and that, I mean, that's that's a big stretch for your a dream sender. No? That would be fantastic. But I just. Uh, now, for me to for me to utter the words "strip mall," Bish, is something quite unique because we don't have them in the UK. That's okay, a term yeah. I had to learn, yeah, to uh, to even understand what a strip mall is. But I just I, I can see a strip mall. No, that's that would be that would be ideal for what he feels is hard to do for sure. Well, there we go. Yeah. yeah. So, the Holy Spirit told me there's one with your name written on it, but you need to go. Wow! Well, come on, John. Go west. Go look at west. this right here. Like, look at this right here. Shata kapasa. Oh, come on, there people! You, go. you got to sow into this anointing. My God, something's happening. There you go. Woo. See, the purpose of prophecy is, as Bishop Gill said, to confirm something you already know. And in confirming something that you already know, God may then speak further intentions but will never speak of the future without confirming something you already know. Right. And yeah. most of us think that, oh, it's just, you know, somebody else has given me a word and you're just confirming that word. No, God will get your attention by confirming to you through things you've done. I can remember having a... <laughs> I can remember talking to Bishop Clarence McClendon in Los Angeles, and I was describing to him on the phone as I was texting him Jesus. something... And he texted me back and said to me, what you're texting me now is actually happening as you're texting. <laughs> wow. I'm doing what you're texting me. And there's no way that you could know because I'm in, I'm in Inglewood, which is right next to LAX. Yeah. And you're in Wales. Yeah. 
and his his uh, his um, armor bearer that also knows me. He texted me later that night and said, "Oh my word, there is no way that I I, the, the, I I'm texting. I've met at this point. I've not met Bishop McClendon in the flesh. We were still mm -hmm. just text buddies, you know. And then um, they came to London." And he was, I was talking with him in the green room and his, you know, his team were there and all that lot. And, and uh, I turned to his, his uh, armor bearer and I said to him, so uh, what's happening between you and the young lady that you're pursuing? And he just looked at me and went, say that again? I said, the young lady that you're after. And he's like to me, he said to me, what has Bishop been talking? I said, you can ask him. He hasn't said a word to me. I said, in fact, you even, you've spoken to her a couple of hours ago. It's just nobody else in this room knows. And he, I had his complete and undivided attention. Why? I just confirmed something he already knew. How on earth would I know he had a phone call with a woman in Los Angeles that nobody else knew, of, uh, knew about? So, I'm, uh, you know, this is why prophecy is so important. And, and prophecy by the Spirit of God, not this abuse of prophecy that I've seen for so many years is is so important to flow in the right spirit. My God, my God. There was a name that caught my attention. Let me find it, let me find it. Jessica Jansen, there it is. That name caught my attention. Holy Spirit, what do you want to say to Jessica? You spoke over just a few minutes ago. Did I? Yeah, maybe there's more. Yeah, you told her all you see over her is prosperity. Ah, that explains she's, she's one of She's one of the lady that's best friends. She was in our wedding and everything. I mean, we know her very well. Wow. Maybe the Holy Spirit wasn't finished. Yeah. Saturia Kediai. My God, there's a lot of people that have been on for this whole broadcast. Something's happening. I'm, I, I'm, I can hear things the Holy Spirit is telling me now concerning Jessica, but I, I want to say this before I speak, Bishop. I can't wait until the two of us are standing in the same room together. Oh, yeah, I know. That and, would be uh, and, wonderful. and doing this in the flesh, not doing this over the internet. Yeah. Uh, Lance, uh, Lance Gilliland, Lance Gilliland, he's been on the whole broadcast. I him and I, him and I, we've been doing lives together for like a year and a half yeah. and we finally met last uh two weeks ago in charlotte and we've been waiting for the day Praise and God. then he's then he was with me when we went to michigan and then he's coming to calgary in, the, in next week and so Praise when God. we met it was just like it was yeah so it's gonna be a great celebration bishop when i get to meet you in the human flesh same with james Praise anthony woods we had talked for since last January, never met in person. And then we were with him for a weekend, him and his wife, mm -hmm. Lady Lily, and, and uh, just beautiful people. Lance Gillian. Is that Gilliland? Is that correct? Yeah, Lance Gilliland. Gilliland. He says, I put the Gill in Gilliland. <laughs> <laughs> and he's been doing broadcasts with you for over a year. Yeah, like we've been on several together. We've had each other. He's been doing broadcasts for close to three years. He was doing it before the pandemic, like yourself. Mm. I see a new He's studio struggling. in his life. Wow, come on, prophesy. He's the guy I told you about the camera, Bishop, that you gave me the info when he went and got the camera. This is the guy. I definitely. <laughs> Voice of Fire International. Lance, are we friends on Facebook? I'm sure. I think I'm sure are. I know that yeah. voice of fire, but I, I, I see a, 
Yeah, come on. I see. Speak I can over. see a new studio in your. So I don't know. <laughs> come on, Lance. Woo. This is. Uh, it's it, it's. <laughs> do, do you know what's strange about it? Is um. Shut that up, also. The, the the studio I see set up is not the the studio you would assume would be the kind of studio a preacher wants. Like people look at my setup here and go, "I don't look like church." Yeah, I, 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 exactly you're, I you're on, my brother. <laughs> you're on. In fact, we, I tell you what we'll do: we'll finish this one, go straight on to your. <laughs> I, I there's a there's a very very specific setup that he he's been looking at. It's true, hundred percent. Uh, and trying to really thinking is should I do this? I'm telling you, my brother, go for Shut broke. In fact, Shut. he has a he has a unique perspective on on uh, media <laughs> ministry, a, a, very very different to what we associate with church and and, and so wants true. to do wants to do you know Come more on. kind of videography kind of stuff a lot more yeah, pre-recorded yeah. stuff and as well yeah, as a live broadcast yeah, yeah, and really yeah, take his yeah. <laughs> his ministry down that road come on sir that's a lot here it is and i'm i'm telling you my man there's a there wow. is a massive favor on that and yes. uh, what's going to be unique Shut for you is that not only will you end up consulting for other ministries showing them how to do what you do is that they will be desperate for you to to uh, you, you'll get so many job offers come run our media ministry come run. <laughs> and uh you're gonna be there's a new age of media ministry coming to the body of christ wow. now I, I assume that he's there in canada with you so no um, he's in he's in uh, birmingham alabama Oh, down south. Okay. Yeah, he's deep south. Well, I, 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 wow. Hmm. That's interesting because I can see Canada written over his name. Yeah, well, he's coming next week. He's coming to be with me. No, no, no. no. This oh. is a permanent thing. Oh, yeah. Well, he, not he'd a... be open. He'd be open to that. <laughs> but I, we'd, but re I, we'd receive him. I, I'm, I'm, I, I am wow. seeing. Oh, his good. ideas, his strategies, yeah. the things yeah. that he's talked to you about, very pioneering. <coughs> so true. In a, yeah. in a new wave of, or new new uh, direction of media ministry within yeah. the church. Yeah, and it, it, now, I, I, I'm not saying that Lance is going to move to Canada. It might be God use him to establish something there in Canada and have yeah. a permanent foot there. Um. I love that picture. When I when I when I first met Lance Gilliland, Gilliland, I thought he was out of his cotton picking man. I thought only people in the South and Texas used the phrase yeah, cotton yeah, yeah. picking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. That's a wonderful thing. See now, see now, I understand. Okay, now pictures that I've been seeing through the broadcast are coming together. Wow. Because I keep looking at Jerry's, and Jerry's written a lot of interesting stuff tonight during the yeah, broadcast. And I keep that. looking yeah. at his and seeing a video camera, you know, like uh, you know, a, 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 like the kind of stuff that you and I use. I shouldn't say video camera, but you know, a camera. Now I see the connection to what Lance is doing because he says, "Now I'm I'm out of my cotton picking mine along with him." Now uh, 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 Darcy says, "No, we all say cotton picking," uh, which yeah. I understand. <laughs> Now I understand. So there are major connections happening in the spirit that we're yet to see happening in the manifestation of the natural. But for Lance, there's definitely a, a real pioneering thing in the in the realm in this whole realm of this new age of media ministry. And his ideas are absolutely bonkers, but Mind truly it's pioneering. True. It's true. And. And Jerry has a connection to something to do with that. I, I have yet to work that out. And I'm not saying that because of what he's told wow. me. I've been seeing that all night. But they, oh. I, 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 it's almost like, how could I put it? Oh. What would be the analogy I could use to... I mean, it's almost like Jerry's going to become the wealth manager of the duo. 
Yeah. Go, Jerry. Come on, Lance. <laughs> you know, Lance is the Lance is the creative. Lance is the pioneer. Yeah. And Lance, the, if that if I, I guess I need to learn a lot from you because I'm nowhere near as good uh, as I should be. He's, he's the one that with. thought. He's the one that taught me, Bishop, how to get on and get up and going. Lance was the yeah. guy. Um, Him and Joe Benjamin, and you. But there's. Well, see, what I'm seeing is not just the live stream. I'm talking about, you know, real kind of yeah, moving into I that whole videography saying. and all that lot. And yeah. that, that's, that, for you me, that's where, I, yeah, that's where I fail is I'm good at the live streaming. I'm not good at sorting the graphics out afterwards and, you know, changing oh, all the thumbnails as they tell you to do. And, but I, I really yeah. got to get better at the... Um, I, I really got to get better at the videography side of things. Couldn't agree more, Sebastian. Couldn't agree more. Uh, but I, I see Jerry being a wealth manager involved in that whole project. And uh, my word. Uh, Jessica, I haven't one. forgotten you. Don't no, think for one yeah, second I've forgotten you. Yeah. But I... Uh, I uh, saco riti and God wrote prosperity all over her life. Yeah, wow. Bishop, you know her. Help me out here. Yeah, I know Jessica very well. She has a, a business of her own. Uh, that I don't know, but she's a she's a teacher's assistant. I know no, that much. That's not her future. But, but she she may have yeah, exactly. And she knows that. That's Holy Ghost. No, I, I, I'm seeing... Yeah, come on. Tell her what you're seeing. I'm, I'm seeing online stores like Shopify and... Wow, and, she could do and that. Etsy and, and, and Pinterest and... Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just... I, I, I believe... Help me, Holy Ghost. Jesus. She got an idea in the back of her mind. Could very easily become an online business. But because it is so... So much outside of her comfort zone. So much outside of herself. So much... It, it's scaring her into not doing it. Wow. And uh, she is selling herself incredibly short. And uh, I get the sense of a little insecurity, a little uh, unbelief in her own ability to do things. But I really think she needs to uh, step out. <clears throat> believe in yourself, Jessica. Believe in the, 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 the idea you've got great word believe that you can do it step out and give it a shot jesus why not because god has been waiting on you waiting on you waiting on you sure. asking how long how much more you're going to make me wait wow. there's a lot that i want to do but you know i need you to step out thank you holy spirit but i i see I definitely see big opportunity in, in online business. Lord, we break wow. yeah. whatever is on Dan's life now that is trying to come against him and make her. I speak health and healing. I command his body to line up with the word of God, which is perfect health, perfect wholeness in Jesus' name. Not in the next hour, not in the next day, right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. You know what I see, Bishop? 
I see a young lady called Darcy Shannon, such an incredible encouragement to other people. And really needing someone to come along and be an encouragement to her. Really needing someone to come along and say, Thus saith the Lord, or something that Yeah, Dan, as I'm speaking by the Spirit of God, you better expect one heck of an outpouring of the Holy Ghost tomorrow. That's why the devil, that's why, remember, the devil only attacks you when he doesn't want something to happen. But but going back to Darcy, very, very talented young lady. Very underrated, very overlooked. Own family didn't believe in her at one point. Caused a lot of doubt in her mind. Caused a lot of disbelief. But Darcy, I want you to hear me now when I say this. The Holy Spirit really wants you to know you are worthy. You are worthy. The Holy Spirit really wants you to know He has so much confidence in who you are and who you can be. The Holy Spirit wants you to know you are not what other people said about you. You are what God says about you. You are not who other people says about uh, who uh, other people say you are. You are who God says you are. And you have no need whatsoever to feel less than anybody. Because he has made you perfect. He has made you perfect. In fact, the Holy Spirit has created you so perfectly that you are the only one. You are the only one that is perfect for the thing that he has created you for. For the assignment that he has created you to fulfill. And the enemy has tried year after year, quite some time now, really break you down, break down your your confidence, your, your self-esteem, your self-worth. But it's time for you to stand up. You need to look that Goliath in the face like David did. And say, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that dares mock the God of Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that dares mock the God of Darcy? You need to open your eyes. You really need to open your eyes and start seeing your life. See your life through God's eyes. See your God, your life through God's perspective. See who you are through Him. And, uh, don't, don't worry about uh, don't worry about what other people have said they don't know who you are and they don't know who God created you to be so stop believing what other people say about you stop believing what God says about you Sandori Hallelujah. You got your earphones working now, Bish? They went uh they went dead. I had them charged up. My other ones aren't clicking in, so I just took them off. But I can I can hear everything clearly. Okay. As long as you're with us, that's all I care about. Sorry. Hallelujah. I was, wondering, I was wondering, Bishop, I don't, I don't know if you would, but my friend, uh, Pastor Alvin Oliver, he's from Cape Town, South Africa. He's been on this whole broadcast. And he said, he said this is just phenomenal. It's just touched him. So would you be able to pray over him, maybe? We're going to do better than that. Uh, yeah, I'll do what you feel. You know, my wife is from the Western Cape. Yes, I remember that. South Africa. That. 
So, uh, Pastor Alvin, I, I, I want to do more than um, just pray over you. Yeah. I've ministered so in their church from there before. Wow. He's part of our Knight family. Um, my brother, can you find me on Facebook or Instagram or somewhere? Send me a message. I want to connect with you. But, uh, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My God. Well, my my wife is from a a town not too far from Friedenburg in the Western Cape. There's a, uh, there's a meeting being planned by the Holy Spirit concerning Pastor Alvin. And uh, he um, has no idea about it. But uh, she talked about that meeting is going to put him on Christian television all over South Africa. <laughs> And uh, there's going to be a flow Holy Spirit just give me a chance okay you're speaking too fast <laughs> Can't hear everything at the same time. There is a very strong grace on this. I'm, I'm very keen not to use the word anointing because I know what Isaiah said. I know what Jesus quoted from Isaiah. So I know there's one anointing. As much as preachers all over the world talk about anointings for this, that, and the other, there is one anointing that is given to us for, for multiple reasons. There is a grace on this man's life. True. In the area of soul winning. Yeah. Great evangelistic. Uh, mm. Grace. I'm, I'm trying to find another word, but that's. And um, his exposure on television is going to unlock a flow of the miraculous through his ministry, through his life, specifically to win souls. And it won't just happen when he's on TV. It'll, it, uh, it, it will be kind of Catherine Kuhlman-esque, kind of Tim Story-esque, you know, in the supermarket and it happens in the grocery store in the department store in the in the you know uh, sitting at dinner in the spur or something like that and and I'm, I'm going to. The Holy Spirit showed me something. I'm going to give an example of one of the things that's going to happen in his life. Is he's going to be sitting in a restaurant, and the person serving him is going to be sick. Not you know sick as it, but there's going to be something wrong. And just by serving him, as he steps into this new dimension of this new depth of this grace that like it used to happen with Miss Kuhlman 
people around him are going to get healed just because of what's on him. Yeah, well. But it's, it's that thing that's going to catch people's attention. And because of that, uh, a door is going to open up for him to put him on TV all across South Africa. And I believe it'll go further afield. I'm, I don't hold, quote me on that because I just believe something will happen from that. But just, just keep focusing, my brother. Keep pursuing the, passionately pursue the presence of God. Passionately pursue the presence of God. I don't know why. I do not know. I do not know why those are the words coming out of the spirit, but that's what he's telling me. Telling me concerning your life, passionately pursue the presence of God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. And I promise you this: when I get to to uh, South Africa, because I'm coming to Cape Town, yeah. you all better make sure we meet up. Bishop, can I? Are you done with him? Or I'll, oh yeah, yeah, you. you, you, you. <laughs> if you're done with him, I want to tell you something. Yes, sir. This, this is the Holy Ghost connection, because Alvin is just stepping into politics in South Africa. Oh, wow. Along with pastoring, mm -hmm. and God, and God has called him to be one of the great leaders of South Africa, and he knows it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so just just uh it's incredible that this would happen this connection right here <clears throat> because i mean oh, you're boy. used in those things too i mean and so i yeah politics yeah. is my and i my won't even field. i won't even share i won't even share what he shared with me he can share it with you but it's it's anyways there's this is bigger than what mm -hmm. bigger than just a conversation on this line yeah, yeah. Well, as you know, Bishop, po politics is one of my other fields. I know. That's why I'm saying this is uh, so powerful. It's not even like Sharabo Soto. Yeah. yeah. He's running right now as a as a alderman or a counselor or something. I'm, I'm not sure what the term they use there, but he's in the midst of a campaign right now. Wow. So, you know, I got a, I, I got a, uh, um, what day is it now? Sunday. Yesterday. I was Monday. talking to a friend. Uh, Mon I don't know what. Oh, it's Monday for me now. Yeah, I'm thinking of you. So yesterday, Saturday, I was talking to a, a candidate for city mayor in one of the smallest cities, not too far from Atlanta in Georgia, wow. who's running in this election. Following the strategies I given, I, I laid out at the start. Put uh, they put out a massive post to to kick off his campaign. And I wrote the whole post for them on social media and put it out in, in letters and goodness knows what. He is so far out, out in front in the polls now wow. that uh, the incumbent hasn't even, it, with, with four weeks left before the election, the incumbent hasn't got, as we would say in the UK, a snowball's chance in hell of catching him up, never mind overtaking him. Uh, I think he's polling at about 70% in the polls in that city. Wow. So God needs, God needs... Uh, men and women of God in the political environment. I was, uh, in fact, a week ago today, at this time, I was about an hour from home, having uh, on my way back from speaking at a political political conference. Mm. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, uh, hallelujah. Powerful. Come on, people, just so, 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 come on. Hallelujah. Shabbat. Hmm. Katori and Deshe. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know why. But, uh, <laughs> my brother Alvin down there in South Africa, uh, the Holy Spirit's going to open up a door of opportunity for relationship with the Chief Justice. Oh, yeah. Yep. 
almost like uh, you'll become a spiritual advisor Jeez. to one of the chief justices of South Africa. And that's not the fullest extent of what God's calling you to do in that that political environment, but it'll be mm. it'll be leave it'll be one of the <laughs> John Maynard says, "Come on to Georgia, bro." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wants you down there. He said, "Where, where does work? he live? Where, John, uh, where do you live?" One hour outside of Augusta, Georgia. Okay. Yeah. Well, my my uh, my friend lives in Hepsipah, Georgia, the one running Louisville, Louisville. Louisville. Yeah. Okay, I know where Louisville is in relation to Augusta, so yeah. I have friends in Hepsipah, Georgia. So next time I'm over there, I have to go to Tennessee to go visit my covenant prayer partner, and then I'll be heading up to Hepsipah, Georgia, as well. There we go, thirty minutes from me. Look at this. Uh I want you to see this. Look what Alvin just put. Oh, there we go. Praise God. <laughs> John you. drove through Hepsipah last night. That's funny. Yeah. Yeah. The Pastor Daniel saying, come on over to Montreal. Yeah, everybody everybody wants you. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm, I, listen, if that lunatic that you've got running the country would let us in, I'd be there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, why y'all didn't? Why y'all didn't vote that lunatic? Oh, I'll never know. No, Jesus help me. See, they want you in Malaysia. They want you in Tennessee. They want you all over the place. Well, Tennessee's on my Tennessee's on my my radar because I need to get to uh, just outside of Murfreesboro in Tennessee, which is about what about an hour from Nashville. So. Oh, Lord. Virginia, California. I'm going to start collecting a finder's fee right here, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your super agent right here. Just boom. <laughs> Kimberly saying, come to Virginia. Yep. California needs you. Well, Darcy, I'm, I'm heading to California. Uh, I was hoping to be there in November this year, but I don't think I will be. But I yeah, am heading Carolyn to California. Lives in California too. She's right there. I I will be heading to Inglewood in uh, in Los Angeles. Yeah. Which, uh, as I said, is right next to LAX. Oh, I can fly to the U.S. already. The U.K. is already open to the to to the U.S. We've we got a we got a. a, a You're fine a, to fly in here too now, Bishop. Yeah, we got a travel arrangement now with with uh, the Europe, Bishop. I'm going to say something by the Holy Ghost. Oh Lord, this is a bold thing to say. Um, Prime Minister Trudeau is not going to serve a full term. Mm, I thank you, Holy Ghost. There is a whole host of yeah, it's tense stuff that's going to come out. Yeah, I believe you're right, and it is. Oh, people are going to be really, really shocked when it comes out. Yeah. Now, I would love to go to Australia, and i tell you why. These guys are in our network. I've been to their church. So let, let me tell you why I'd love to go to Australia. Yeah, tell us. My great uncle built the university library at Melbourne University. Oh, wow. And I want to go see that. Now, I don't mean he was the builder. I mean he was the guy that paid for it all. Yeah, because well. my my great uncle was Lord Bailey uh, in Australia, and Lord Bailey, the first Lord Bailey, not the current Lord Bailey, <laughs> is uh, he was Churchill's uh, a minister of war for for the uh, Anzac countries uh, during the Second World War. Veronica's in Perth. Well, my Prime family used to teach at university in melbourne so she would know the bailey library at melbourne yeah. university there you go. so that was my great uncle and and the connection to perth is fantastic because my father's family are the dewar family dewars make whiskey in scotland and their their base is perth in scotland oh well. nice so there we go there we go Veronica. yes for that there you go the aussies are opening her up <laughs> 
So they, you know, they ask you when uh, when you go to Australia, uh, as you enter the country, they ask you, <laughs> have you got a criminal record? And a, right. and a friend of mine, knowing that Australia obviously began its life as Britain's uh, um, <laughs> Britain's penal colony, he went to Australia and they asked him at the airport, have you got a criminal record? To which he's to which he asked back, I don't, uh, no, I didn't realize it was still a prerequisite. So apparently that didn't go down too well with the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the Aussies. <laughs> but there we go. So Rachel is a pastor's wife, yeah? Yeah, Rachel and her husband, Marcus, pastor. It's New okay. South Wales, yeah. And she's... she's just stepping into a new realm of uh, ministry to women. Come she's, on, been a, she, she's been a little unsure about doing this because it's a bit out of the ordinary, a bit, bit, you know, because it's not in a church setting. She wants hey, to reach out to women up. outside of the church. Come and on. Uh, I'm, I, I just go for it. Go for broke. And you'll see incredible success. These are women that the church was basically... How would I put it? They're women the church wouldn't go near. Let's put it that way. They wouldn't be considered the right kind of people to be in the church. Yeah, that's so true. That's the word of art. But they're the right kind of people to be in the kingdom. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Wow. Holy Spirit told me several years ago, anytime you meet someone that doesn't consider certain kinds of people to be the right kind of people in the church, just know they're not the right kind of people to be in my kingdom. Sato yesterday. Want to see them raised up. This is to do with... Uh, a part of this is reaching into the... Oh, Lord, how do I put this? Got to be so careful with words nowadays with all the woke warriors and everything else. You just say it. She'll, she's raw as can be, Rachel. Yeah, I don't want you to be sued by what, <laughs> <laughs> by, by what I say. But part of this outreach is to do with with uh, prostitutes and, and uh, well, yeah. women in the sex industry. Yeah, well. And, uh, you, you know the hardest part? Oh, God, don't make me cry now. Jesus. There's a there's a pastor in North America. <clears throat> there is a pastor in North America. I forget his name. And uh, he married a very high profile porn actress. I can't remember her name either. In the US. I remember reading the story about their life and how they decided to uh, uh, continue pastoring the church. And you can imagine the kind of grief that he went through because of who he chose to marry. And uh, there we go. Praise God. And um, I remember reading their interview. It was like the Church Times or something here in the UK. It was not an evangelical yeah. uh, publication, you know, because the Church Times is the Anglican publication. But they'd done this story on them. And she was they were just starting to launch a ministry here in, in, uh, in the UK to reach into, you know, the this basically the sex workers industry, prostitutes, porn stars, that kind of stuff. And they asked her what's, what's the biggest challenge that she ever faced coming from that background and, and and I always remember her words because they were very poignant because she said in the I'm sure it was the church times it might have been there's a couple of different church publications it might have been one of the other ones 
But she said the hardest thing that she struggled with after she left that industry was having a sense of worth. Because, you know, she'd had relations with hundreds of different men and 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 had just been this thing that got paid to perform and 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 I think you know when when church people look at it and and I'm I'm trying to be diplomatic in what I'm saying but I hope you'll you'll hear what I am saying uh We forget that, irrespective of what they've done, they're still human beings. They're still people. God still loves them. And we need to be a place where the, the church, we need to be the place where the sinner finds their sense of worth. I couldn't agree more. Jesus, thank you. We're supposed to be the place where people come that are broken and we fix them. We're supposed to be the place where people come with all manner of junk and all manner of mess. I, I, I used to say it, the church is supposed to be supposed to be God's witness protection place <laughs> program. You come with a broken life and 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 broken um, emotions and broken feelings and, and and needing to start all over again and the church is the place that you're supposed to come to where you're given a new identity in Christ where you're given a new life to live where you're taken out of what you used to know and put into something new like you would be in witness protection and we've become this place that when people come, if their face doesn't fit, if their heart, if they they don't dress the right way, or or they don't say the right things, or because of the the industry they came out with, uh, came out of, like you know, sex workers, for example, or or drug addicts and and people like that, is that as well, I was just about to say that we we're not a we're not a place of restoration. We're the place where the, we're the place of execution. But the sinners are supposed to come to us to be healed, and we are shooting them dead. And what's even worse is we're the only army in the world that leaves our wounded on the field of battle. Mm. Jesus. There's not another army in the world that does it. Sandoria Biaste. Now you told me, you said right at the beginning of the broadcast. Uh, is it uh, Premla is in the Malaysia. Philippines, you said? KL, Malaysia. KL, yeah. Kuala Lumpur. But she's, a she's been living in uh, Perth the last six years, but now she's currently in Malaysia right now, in KL. Okay, so she, she's back in Kuala Lumpur. Yep. Now, now That's one of my in... favorite cities. I, lo I love KL. It's, it's amazing. Now, see, I understand now you've explained that because... That's not where the Holy Spirit intends to keep her. Right. She told me that two days ago. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And she'd been asking for the... She's basically at the point of asking God, how do I get out of this? Where do I go? And the Holy Spirit is telling me, you're, you're, you're moving towards trusting people to do things for you that only God can do. Because there's a, it's, it's almost like a... A desperation to leave where she's at now. Jesus. And wow. Premla, I want you to know, don't look to where you once were. Jesus. I hear the words of Isaiah so strong in my spirit. Behold, I will do a new thing. God. So there's a new country involved. God is going yeah. to open the door to <laughs> a new country. True. Yeah. For you to go to. Uh, and it's prepared, it's ready, it's waiting, but everything is about the timing. That's why Solomon wrote so powerfully in Ecclesiastes, for everything under the sun there is a reason and a time.
timing season for everything. Yeah. And if you if you try and jump start the process, you you're going to interfere in what God's trying to do. And like Job discovered, God's God all by Himself. Just trust God. He don't need your help. He's got it all taken care of. But you need to be asking God, where is it? You're looking to where you once were. You're looking back to Perth and Australia, and that's not where God wants you. There's a place for you you need to find out so that you can begin to prepare and you can do what you need to do. And, and Premla, don't worry about the money to cover it. God's got that taken care of. Because that's one of your biggest things. How am I going to pay for it all? God's got that. Wow. What a word. Don't worry about it. God's God, God, listen. God will take you and you will prosper in the place you've been assigned to be. Yes. So God's going to get you there. Don't worry about it. He's got all of that taken care of. Yeah, wow, well, powerful. <laughs> so. That's so powerful, Bish, because I just talked to her two days ago and she told me the exact same stuff you just said. Wow, well, praise God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So, hallelujah. <laughs> John Mead, John Mead is so funny. Look what he put. I can listen to this guy read the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise God. <laughs> here, Prem, it's not a laugh, but here's, look, look what Premla said. I know it's not back to first, so it's on point, Bishop. She knows, yeah. Praise God. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Bishop, I can't believe. Are you still awake? Like you can shut down any time. It's three o'clock in the morning for you right now. Bishop, you know me. If, I, I, I'm a quint, I, I am I am quintessential <laughs> preacher and politician. You put a microphone in front of me, we'll never shut up. Come on, people, get that seed in the ground. www.myiam.org. We want to bless the bishop for his ministry today, and and uh, he's always such a blessing, and. We never want to take advantage of the man of God. And so we're thankful and we want to just sow into him today and and uh, just be a blessing to him. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. You should have a podcast, Elizabeth said. I do have a podcast. Oh, I need to go. update Tell it. Tell us about it then. So I... I uh, uh, yeah. You can find the old episodes. It's funny because I was literally last week thinking, Dewa, you need to start recording stuff for your podcast again. But if you go on um, iTunes or yeah. Spotify and just type in CDTV podcast, you'll find it is there. Okay. And uh, there's some other stuff that we do on YouTube as well. Just search for Bishop Dewa. It's all there. I'm easy to find. I'm, I'm at Bishop Dewa on all of my social media. There's the podcast, uh, Elizabeth, if you're interested. In others. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. Yes. Akuriti and Ayabaste. Hallelujah. Oh, Philomena, you don't need to pray for a new chapter. God's already written it. Jesus, come on. She's, in, worry about she's that. in Hong Kong, Bishop. I know she she uh, she tunes yeah, in to pray with us. Sometimes, yeah, I've seen on her. the fourth watch, and yeah. I, I know she's been going through a, a difficult patch. But the Holy Spirit yeah. just told me, "Don't worry about praying for a new Thank chapter. You. God's already written it. In fact, there's a there's a move coming out of Hong Kong. Wow, yeah. God doesn't want to keep her there. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's uh, <laughs> that region is going to become too unstable for a while. Yeah. God, God wants her. God wants her and her family in a place of safety. That's the word that comes: a place of safety. Okay, that's important. Yeah. yeah. Just to answer you, Raquel. Um, yeah. If you go to if you go to the myeim.org website, you can just click PayPal for there, and the info's on there. Bless you. Hmm. Hallelujah. Philomena wants to go to New Zealand. There you go. Well, there you go. No, I didn't know that. She's never told me about that. I didn't know that, but there it is right there. 
for you are great. <laughs> you do miracles so great. I just feel. Do you know, I was singing that when I was ironing my shirt this yesterday morning. Uh, I just felt it right here as we're singing. <laughs> John just wrote in the comment. His voice is like a lion's <laughs> mane. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> His voice is like a lion's mane. Well, you know, uh, you know, Bishop. What's what's very powerful? <laughs> what's powerful about John is he's not he's not only a pastor, but he's also the sheriff. Oh in wow! That, in that area. John, I, I'm telling you, my brother, when I get over to Hepzibah, I really want to meet you. Yeah, yeah, you need to meet I him. I really he, do. Yeah, he's good. He's Man, good. You, you're making me good. Yeah, he cracked me up. <laughs> so uh, I guess on a Saturday night when the clubs are turning out, he just arrests them all and takes them to church on <laughs> Sunday morning. <laughs> right. you, know, you know what he did, Bishop? I mean, so powerful. I mean, he's, he's a deep southerner. Yeah, he's a police chief. I'm sorry, he's not sheriff. He's a chief. Um but what he did for his church is basically he created this church. Yeah. Uh, started this church in the middle of the pandemic. And, oh my God. and now there are about 60 people already. Wow. And other churches in the town hate them, of course. Understandably. And so what he did was he, he went right to the middle of the town and took a big tub out there and did a baptism right in the middle of the town. <laughs> Well, look at that. I actually tell them all the time at the jail. I invite them to church. Yeah. Now, in Louisville, does the police chief answer to the mayor? I have no idea. No, I'm, 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 I'm yeah, asking him. Yeah. I, I'm Pastor Chief. So John, does the do you answer to the mayor of the city or yes, yeah, you do. No. Yeah, I see. I'd change that image. <laughs> well, no, I, I I can see the mayor and the council. Okay, see, so, yeah, because yeah, I can see mayor next to his name. Wow. Shut so up. I believe, I believe <laughs> that John's not just going to be the pastor and a former police chief. He's going to be mayor of that city. <laughs> Come on. That's awesome. In fact, that's not that. That's there's a higher public office that God's calling him to as well. Jesus, wow! Higher than the city mayor. Messing this boy up. Yeah, I can see him sitting in the state legislature. Wow. Well, Georgia could use a little bit of help. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. I, I like the fact that Pr Premler says she didn't know that a lion's, lion's mane had a voice. <laughs> yeah. Nadia, in the next seven days, every wrong voice in your life is going to be exposed. Not just Jesus, yours, but your son's on. as well. Wow. Yeah. Healing on her boy. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 all of the problems that she's going through, the, the choking, the yes. all of that with her son, it's yeah. all caused. There is one person in his life that is the cause of it all. Yeah. He's going through it. The The only way I can put it is there's a, uh, uh, what's the, the easiest way of putting it? There's a Jonah on your boat. Wow. Because people forget the storm ceased when they threw Jonah overboard. There's a Jonah on the boat. Yeah. God's going to expose. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God is going to to expose. <laughs> Throw them overboard. John. I I agree. <laughs> Throw them overboard. You know the Jesus. the Holy Spirit is. The Holy Spirit has given me some beautiful words for uh, for Nadia over the time, but oh yeah, she's a wonderful person. The, the, this is uh, Nadia. Look me straight in the eyes. Holy Spirit wants you to know 
He ain't playing games anymore. Yeah. He has allowed people the opportunity to put things right for you, to do things right by you, and they haven't. He ain't about. He ain't playing games anymore. You, you about to see a little, a, a little of that. Uh, what the Old Testament would have said: fire and brimstone fall him from heaven. They, 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 he's, the Holy Spirit's going to give him a chance. Put things right, or he's about to put them right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There's a um, Raquel. 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 Duca. Yeah, Raquel. Yeah, right here. Sorry. Make a documentation of the seed you've sown tonight. Yeah. Record it. Oh, yeah. Keep putting it, uh, uh, put it in your diary or something. I uh, I saw a debt-free house attached to that seed. Yeah, oh, my friend. Is it Karen? Karen Larkin? Yeah, uh, Kareen. Yeah, Kareen. She's from San Antonio, Texas. I know Kareen personally. Age? Uh, I'd say she's probably 30s. I don't know. I hope that's not offensive, Kareen. I don't know how old you are. <laughs> I can see, uh, you know, God, God has astounded me in my life. Um, Thirty-five. The Holy Spirit has allowed me to see many things. Now I don't know whether it's because of my mentor, uh, because of the grace that's on his life that has overflowed to my life, but. God really allows me to see a lot in the in the area of of uh, what can I say? Uh, let me just use the term prosperity. And um, <clears throat> I see a lot of uh, of business ideas, not in me in other people. Man, I wish I see the amount of business ideas I've seen in other people for myself. I'd be a more than <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, I hear you, Bishop. I see a product. I don't know whether Karen is working on it or has an idea for it or whatever it is, but I see a product. And I see it going into <clears throat> stores like Walmart, Walgreens, uh, wow. Kmart. That's big. Target. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Bishop. We're three hours into this. I got to keep it light now. But you know what? That, I, I'm not being funny, but that that reminded me of Dave Chappelle so much. You know when he he told the, oh, yeah, told the story of of Juicy Smouille. Jesse oh, Smollett and then that nonsense that went on there. But I, I, <laughs> I, for, the, I for this young lady, because she is younger than me, I, I just, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether she's got an idea for a product or she, but somehow she's going to come up with a product that's going to end up in, you know, it, oh. it, it's going to end up in grocery Mainline stores. Mainline stores, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's going to have, a, it's going to be, it's going to be phenomenal. Really is going to be phenomenal. There's a there's a um, there was a guy in the UK, uh, Rastafarian by the name of Levi Roots, and uh, he went on this. um, Now over here we call it uh, 
the Dragon's Den. I, I think in America they call it Shark Tank. Yeah, Shark Tank. But in Canada, it's also Dragon's Den. Okay, so you know the kind of program. So yeah. he went on. He went on a program <laughs> like that with this thing that he called Reggae Reggae Sauce. Yeah. Right? Which was this? This basically it was a, a jerk based. A jerk seasoning based uh, barbecue sauce. Yeah. And uh, there was only one of the dragons that really was interested. And, and he explained them, you know, I've started, I make this myself, I've started selling it. And uh, he had a deal, he had, he had it on one little unit in one supermarket. And. Uh, there's not a supermarket in the UK that you can't go into now and buy reggae, reggae sauce. And then they came out with a whole load of other stuff to go with it. Yeah. You know, because yeah. then, they then they had a soft drinks line. And, and, wow. and Karen, I don't know what God's going to do, but there, there's, a, there's a product going to be birthed out of you. Kareen, what a word. Wow. Hallelujah. Hey, Brother C, good to see you. Great name for it. You know, Bish, I, I, we're in danger of breaking our record from the last time we were on. Oh, so. I think I yeah. How what were we three three ten last time? Yeah, something like we're that. We're almost there. We can't give up now. We're at three oh nine fifty <laughs> three ten right there. We've broken it. It's a new day. <laughs> <laughs> My God, you're I the am... only one I let go this long, Bishop. By the way. Listen, I, I don't. Because I don't I, have, I don't have a choice. I, I, I can't stop you. <laughs> no, this is, <laughs> this is true. Like, right? but I, I, I want to, with all of, all the people watching, I, I just want to take a moment to honor you, for giving me the freedom to flow as the spirit's leading. That's yeah, beautiful. I thank God for the dynamic that there is between us, for the yeah. flow of the spirit that exists between us, for the friendship and the brotherhood that we have but i want to honor you to your people because being a man being a man of god being a pastor being a minister mm. i know the, the <coughs> excuse me the responsibility that you hand over when you give somebody else your platform and i know the danger of what you're exposing the people that god's given you to care and to instruct and to teach when you hand that platform over to somebody else, which is, as you know, I rarely bring guests onto my my broadcast. It's not because I don't want to. It's just that um, at the moment, uh, I'm mindful of of uh, who I bring on. We're going to change that from next year, 2022. We're going to start bringing some some key people in my life into the broadcast, and uh, you better believe you're number one on the list. Um, and then Bishop Serrano, another friend of mine that you are connected to as well now. Um, he's, I'm going to have him on with us. But uh, Thank you. I, I'm, I'm humbled by your willingness to just go with the Spirit. And, and uh, I'm blessed that God speaks through you so powerfully as well. Thank you. And uh, I know you're a man whose name is known around the world. But you're also a man that God wants to make sure whose name is known around the world. And uh, I just want to honor you, my brother. I really do. Thank and for Lady Di as well. Because I you. know what it's like when... Uh, 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 it's difficult for a minister's wife when a minister has a public platform yeah. on an international scale because... Uh, she has pull. to share. There's a pull, yeah. 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 You know, yeah, sharing is true. Yeah, she, she has to share you with the rest of the world. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. And share you with the people that, that need it. And a lot of ministers' marriages fail because they don't learn to balance. They, they end up in a position yeah. where they, they pastor their family and they father the people God's given them to, to shepherd. Um, and I understand the strain that. It, sometimes it can put on a marriage yeah. when, you know, you do have to share the one that you love, the one that you want to to to, to have all to yourself. And I'm I'm always mindful of of that. Um even though I'm only a, a 
you know, a newlywed myself, I'm mindful of the fact that there's a, uh, uh, for me, it's multiple arenas. It's not just ministry. My wife has to, sh- has had to share me with the political arena as well. And, and, um, you know, so I honor you because you're an incredible couple. You're a couple the Lord has Thank truly you. brought together. Uh, truly kingdom couple. And, you know, many preachers will, or many people say, oh, well, your best days are, are in front of you. And, and sometimes it becomes a cliche because we hear it so much or the, the best is yet to come. And, and sometimes <coughs> people say it and it, it is that <coughs> cliche. It is that, yeah, I've heard that so many times before. But you have not even touched the tip of the iceberg of what God is going to do you, do do through you, do for you, do in you. And, uh, you know, I love that comment. Lady Di compliments Bishop perfectly. And that's, I, I'm, I'm a blessed man because that's the same dynamic Lady G and I have. Yeah. Is there is... It's very obvious to see, you know, when the marriage vows, we 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 make a declaration. Thank you, Sebastian. When we're marrying people, and because I do the traditional vows, and you know, proclaim that what God has put together, let no let man, no put, man asunder. put asunder. But I promise you, it's very very easy to see that you are two people that God has definitely put together. Not just in the the covenant of marriage, but for ministry, emotionally, spiritually. Oh, I mean, it, it, it's very easy to see the two of you are one flesh. So uh, uh, so that's Thank you. a very yeah. long-winded way of me saying I honor the pair of you. And uh, you know I love you with all my heart. Yeah, thank you. And yeah. uh, I, I'm, I'm truly blessed at how quickly we have become as yeah. close friends as we are. And Lady Di gave you a shout out. Oh, I love you too, Lady <laughs> Di. And we, I before E die. I before E. <laughs> except after C. No, no, yeah, she, exactly. she she followed the Queen's English rule. I yeah, before yeah, yeah. E except after C. Exactly. Unfortunately. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> except after C. But uh, exactly right. but I, I I um I want you I want the, everybody on the broadcast to, to hear me honor you because it's right and fitting that we do so. You Thank you're you. one of the you know, when people talk about, oh, you're one of the biggest givers I know, they just assume that you are chunking out hundreds of thousands of dollars or whatever. And I'm amazed by this because this blew my mind. So there was a survey conducted by a, a theological seminary in the U.S. I forget which one offhand. might have been Southwestern. And they did a survey of all of their alumni that became millionaires. And they worked out that even though these millionaires and multimillionaires were given more financially, percentage-wise, they weren't even given a tithe. They weren't even getting close to 10%. So when I tell somebody that's one of the biggest givers I know, I don't mean that they give the most amount of money. I mean that they have one of the most giving hearts, giving natures, giving characters, giving lives uh, that are given lives, I should say, that I've ever encountered. So, you and Lady Di are some of the biggest givers that I know, and Thank I you. love you for it. I really love you for it, and uh, I've been truly blessed to be able to just flow in the spirit and. And just go as the spirit leads, and yeah. Oh, what a what a broadcast! I mean, wow. I would. I thought I thought the last one was amazing, Bish, but I, I it just keeps getting better. Well, you you know, there's coming a day when we're just going to do twenty four hours straight. Yeah. Well, once you get your TV station going over there, come on. Oh yeah. <laughs> do you know it's funny because I actually spoke to somebody about that. Boy. Six hours ago, seven hours ago. Yeah, I just felt that in the Holy Ghost right there that you're going to have your own TV station. You're going yeah. on all these other ones and blessing them, but I feel that God wants to really give you your own station so that he can bless you. 
and use it because you've sewed so much in the media and you know you've been a i mean you've been a forerunner in a way because you you were doing this before the pandemic you were you were involved in that and you have the greatest voice that i know I, do you remember last time Lady Di told you you needed to do nursery rhymes? Yeah, <laughs> to yeah. Put people I, to sleep, do a sleep app. Yeah, I. I <laughs> she I, was yeah. telling people we were out with the other day that she told you that. that was awesome. I'd be like Matthew McConaughey on the sleep app. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, hello, everybody. <laughs> John Meter, John Meter just said he's about to run against Herschel Walker for the Senate now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> he must be bored at work watching. <laughs> I can see what he said. John says, "Read my bills, bro. Read my bills." Yeah, yeah, yeah I see that. Your statement from AT and T. See, everybody loves your voice, Bishop, right there. Well, you yeah, know, I, I voice is like God speaking to me. There, you uh, <laughs> as I've told many people, I I believe God's given me the voice I've got because He certainly gave me a face for radio. <laughs> Um. <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's no. good no yeah, well, thank you for it. yeah that's good yeah well thank you for being on with us bishop we want you to get some sleep you're not doing the night watch tonight are you <laughs> no i am i'll be live tonight in the uk at 8 p.m so that's what uh oh, so you got a little bit you got a little bit of time to get some rest then yeah i to be honest i am um, I will, I, I uh, forgive me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been several hours since my last confession, as we used to say. You know, many patries said, Filiate Spiritus Sancti. I am, um, I am, um, I have to be honest, when I broadcast at night, um, if it if it's later in the night, I struggle tremendously to sleep afterwards. So I'll probably be here yeah, in the sure. studio for a couple of hours, just trying to switch off. And uh, Well, Lance will probably call you and say, let's go, Bishop. <laughs> So I see Karen as you could be the voice the on the airplane. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I, yeah, I, I, as long as, but apparently with British Airways, as long as I no longer say good morning, ladies and gentlemen, it's now uh, good morning, travelers, because they want to avoid all, oh, yeah, all uh, the you know, genders. Uh, yeah. gender, uh, gender, well, gender. <laughs> look at what John Maynard put. I'm going to write a love letter to my <laughs> wife and put audio to it. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should start a business doing voiceovers, Bishop. Be get I did. It. I, I actually did it for a while. I recorded oh. a couple of audio books for a bishop in North Carolina. I don't know whether oh, they yeah. ever used them or not. And I, funnily enough, I was actually talking to um, I uh, baby number five coming. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I was talking to Doctor Mike Murdoch for a while about um, recording yeah. some of his books as audio books, but we never got around to doing it. Yeah. Um, I've been. I have a book out myself called uh, Hashtag MX More, and uh, I'm think. I've been thinking about. It. I should. I should create. A, um, uh, I should create a, an audio book file for that. My friend in the U.S. Um, some people might know him, Pastor Mark Burns. He campaigned for for President Trump in 2016, um, <clears throat> and he's trying to convince uh, the president to run again in 2024 in the U.S. Uh, he has a. He, he introduced me to a political commentator who's of Hungarian descent, but born and raised in England, by the name of uh, Sebastian Gorka, Doctor Sebastian Gorka, host on a, a radio show called America First, and they were trying to convince me to do a, a politics radio show for about an hour a day uh, in the U.S. Uh, purely because of my British voice. So uh, you never know where my voice might pop up, but um, it's really strange because so many people talk about my voice, and it's the one thing about me that I hate more than anything else. I hate hearing myself. But I Lady Dye's Di, Lady Di's brother, he turned sixty-one or sixty-two today, and he's a he's a voice actor in Seoul, Korea. Oh wow! And he and he's been overdoing that, and. and and then he then he got some movie acting roles. He was he was just in uh, two years ago. He was just in uh, a movie with uh, Liam Neeson. That was like his ultimate goal in life. He just he was just went nice. crazy. He, even the scene he was in, he was in it with Liam Neeson, like a whole 
seven minute scene that was in the movie we saw it nice yeah well my, my claim to fame with voices is <clears throat> i rang my mother many years. this is what 1994 i think or 95 i think it was 90 94 1994 i rang my mother and uh, i said to her can you hear this and turned the phone and there was this beautiful <laughs> operatic tenor voice singing and uh, when she asked me, <laughs> use my oh, GPS he's to walk un, the He's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> he's on a roll tonight, I can see. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when I turned my phone, she could hear this wonderful operatic voice wow. singing. And I was, I was stood in the Royal Albert Hall in London, about four foot from Luciano Pavarotti. Oh, wow. Uh, whilst he was, because I used to work for the BBC, he was doing his warm ups for a concert that night. With okay. the uh, the original the original famous Lady Day, uh, Princess Diana was the guest of honor. Oh wow! That's Jessica the movie says, that her brother was in Operation Chromite. Oh Lee wow! Neeson. Yeah, yeah. Dumb question, Jessica says. But why would you hate your voice? Because um, my voice in my head sounds a lot <laughs> different to how other people hear it. <clears throat> right. And uh, and I I I don't like the sound of my voice. The one I hear in in the head, Raquel says, he sounds like bromances. Yeah, he called you lion mane. See, I love you, lion mane. <laughs> now, l l Bishop, let me tell you this. John doesn't know this, but how significant what he's saying is, I have had a thing about lions, hence the lion behind me. Oh, yeah, I see it, yeah. Okay. Lady G bought me that as a gift when I, when I built the first studio in the house, <laughs> which was in an, uh, another room. When I moved into this room, because I needed to use the other room for something else, I insisted I had that picture on the wall, because I have a thing about lions. Wow. My bishop's crest has three, f four lions in it. Two, two, wow. two full-size lions and, and two lion's heads. I have been... So, I, I used to wear a signet ring on this finger. I've had one there since I was 16. When I got married, I moved it to this finger. Right? This one has my initials on it. I have another one with my bishop's crest on it for when I have to you know, put my official seal on the, the church documents and like sealing my, you know, the certificates of ordination, that kind of stuff. The other day, I was seriously thinking, I want uh, I, I wanted to get a new ring made because I have my rings made in silver because my wedding ring is silver. My uh, Lady G's son made my wedding ring. And um, I really kept thinking about, I just want one with a lion on it. In, in heraldry, they call it a rampant lion. I really just wanted a signet ring with a rampant lion on it. And it's funny because I kept thinking about it all day because I have a friend in, in uh, Texas that calls me the, the the Highlander lion. I have a friend in Brazil that calls me the Roaring Lion. And uh, it's really strange because having made the decision, and they're not expensive, they're like five hundred dollars of the, the ring made of US. I actually said if somebody if somebody mentions lions to me in reference to me in the next twenty four hours, as soon wow. as I'm able to, I'll get that I'll get that signet ring made, and and John tonight is called well, me the. So there we go. So he doesn't know that he's speaking to me prophetically as well. There you go, Johnny. There you are. Yeah, remember Jen never, talking about never, it prophetically, didn't? Yeah, know. Jennifer Jennifer Butler, our friend. I was on a call with her and John just the other day, and she said, "You have so much prophetic on you, and you don't even know it." Yeah. You know the prophets are always political. Look at the scriptures. Yeah prophets were always political the prophets were designed were, were created by god to be the voice of god in the ears of kings and rulers yeah so i understand why god is using john so much in the in the world of politics and and you know being the sheriff and the, the plans that he has for him but yeah well i want to thank you for well, being thank that you, confirming Holy voice yeah and you've got it from me as soon as the don't. money's available i'll yeah. get that line there you made. go that's great Praise yeah. God. Well, we love you, Bishop, so much, and Lady G. And please give her our love. And uh, 
hopefully we can snag you one more time before the new year. Oh, we'll make a plan. If we can work it out. Maybe we'll just do a special broadcast. It doesn't even have to be a Wednesday or Sunday. We might just do a special. No problem. We may need to take a whole Saturday and go like nine hours. <laughs> <laughs> See, now that's easy for me. I don't yeah. think the I don't think the viewing or, or, well, or you know audience what? would be able to cover we've that. We stayed. We stayed like between all the feeds. We stayed at thirty people or above. Like for we're at three hours and twenty eight minutes. We're still over oh, thirty God. people. So I mean, well, people they, they, are, next month November's a Carolyn special wants, month. Carolyn me. wants the nine hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, oh, November's a special month away. for me. Is it? Okay, tell yeah. us. Uh, next month, I celebrate 30 years of preaching ministry. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's big. I've been I've been preaching 30 years next month. I yeah, can't believe it. I just and celebrated then, my 30th uh, this past May. Praise God. Well, I've been preaching 30 years <laughs> next month, and then a couple of years from then, I yeah. will have celebrated 30 years in full-time ministry. Yeah, well, yeah, same yeah. with me. 30 yeah. full time was money. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, that's great. Congratulations, because not many people can say that anymore in these days. No, I know it. It's, uh, but I, I'm, I'm, st I'm struggling to think where the last 30 years ago. I think um, uh, somebody said about uh, me hating my book. I, I need you to understand. I don't hate my voice anymore. I was specific. I hated my voice. Right. I've now accepted that God has given me this voice for a reason, and and that's why I use it the way that I do, and and I'm I'm blessed. Oh, the wife's on. Well, there's Lady G just popped on. There she is. Oh, yes. Her, and your birthday. You didn't tell us that, Bish. Come on. Okay, See, so so my ministry. Wife, it's always so, the wife that. Yeah, baby, I love that. you, but. <laughs> <laughs> So my ministry anniversary is actually my birthday. I preached my first sermon okay. on my 15th birthday. Wow, that's good. So my 45th birthday next month is also my uh, my 30th anniversary of preaching ministry. Yeah, that's awesome. Elizabeth says she'll call me Sean Connery. John, <laughs> John here we go. Four more hours. hours. Go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I just need more coffee. I don't mind doing another four hours. I just need more coffee. Pastor Daniel, good to see you, my brother. We we'll speak yeah. again soon. He's come. He's coming to stay with me. He's coming to Calgary <clears throat> next week. Praise God. Because we're doing a we're doing a conference for our night network. For oh, our, I, remember, I think I remember all you our saying Canadian, that. all our Canadian guys. We've got a guy coming from Nigeria also. Uh, when Lance is coming from the U.S., but we're gathering to go. Stephanie Levine, she's staying here at our house with us. Praise uh, God. Dad and his wife are coming. Many people going to converge upon Calgary, so you can keep us in your prayers for that. That's the 21st to the 24th of October. I most definitely will be praying for that. <laughs> and, and that's uh, going to be incredible. Yeah, it'll be good. Lizette Olivia, I assume that's... Uh, yeah, that's Alvin's wife. Alvin's wife, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing people. Oh, that was a, that for, was a Holy Ghost hookup that you and Alvin right there. Wow! She, I you. tell you what, she's in for. Yeah, tell her. <sighs> My she word. Up, uh. Here we go, John. The fourth hour just started. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> but, uh, Lizette is. Uh, oh my yeah. word! I I, I sense Jesus. a major shifting. Wow! Come on. In the realm of the spirit around her, there is definitely. Mm. Very dynamic shift in her teaching ministry. Yeah, wow, that's good. I uh, I see it taking on a very different dynamic, mm. and uh, I see uh, a very visual style of presentation evolving, almost like a kind of you know theatrical style of presenting the the messages that, that that she's bringing and this is uh yeah god god's gonna really use her with with very um very visual i'm, I'm struggling to find the words of what i'm seeing so uh, um if i fail to convey it properly forgive me but these are uh, 
The only way I can describe it is her her messages, her uh, you know the sermons, the teachings. They they're almost like a theatrical production. That's the kind of thing that I'm I'm. There's just this visual element to what she's going to be doing by the Holy Ghost and uh, very very creative she's not not tapped into the full depths of her creative gifts and and uh, the things that she can do very very creative gonna be uh yeah hmm. she's a very creative person that's a good word yeah oh I feel anointing here Bishop my goodness. I feel like I'm at a Benny meeting. I'm just ready to sing and glorify thy name in all the earth. Sing it, Henry. Uh, if you're going <laughs> to do up, it, Henry, get them up. <laughs> <laughs> Lift your hands, precious people. Hallelujah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, I love. The wife will tell me off now when I, when I see her. Oh. Man, I'm going over to John's. If we got the two double <laughs> cheeseburgers and Dr. Yeah. Pepper. Sorry, Johnny, we're all flying in for the for the fiesta. My God, my God, my God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ooh, Lord. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I I'll uh You know what? Well, we better get off before we go to the fourth hour and the fifth hour. Otherwise, yeah, you're going to yeah, be yeah. here all night. I'm going to go off and spend a quiet night with my wife. It's only 7.30 at night here, so we got the whole evening. My God. Hallelujah. Matthew Powell. Shoot. Oh, yeah, come on. Now, this is interesting. Go ahead on this one. I'm not going to say anything. I, I I can see a teaching mantle upon his life. Oh. But it's not related to ministry and it's not related to being a teacher. Mm. This is specifically related to what, what's the term they use nowadays? Marketplace ministry? Yeah. Wow. Untapped, not realized yet, not even thinking about teaching in, in this particular area or doing stuff in this particular area. Oh, son of us. Has been really seeking the Lord about creating another stream of income. Needs to, to expand his financials take it in a different in fact what he's been asking is finding a way to to have money work for him instead of work for his money and um, I see it in this teaching thing I, I my gosh okay let me just see what I let me let me just say what I see. I believe that there are courses is the best word, training courses in him. Digital platforms for delivery because I can see him sitting at a computer. And this is going to be a significant stream of income. And it falls into the category of it working for him, not him working for it. Because it's the kind of stuff that he'll only need to record once. He'll only need to create once and be able to sell multiple times. And keep selling and keep selling. Wow. That's big. And each course will lead to another course, and to and he'll keep teaching wow. in this. 
Now, I don't know what area it is, okay? I'm not even trying to speculate because the one thing I've learned through trial and error is not trying to interpret what the Holy Spirit is saying. Just say what he says. Uh, yeah, good. But I can see each one leading to something new and this online platform of, I'm going to call it a learning platform, whatever it is, courses on you know, Udemy or Skillshare or, or, or whatever it is, opening up different avenues. But I see, I see digital commerce being significant in his life. And the reason it's so weird is because it's got nothing to do with anything he's doing right now. So I don't know whether that makes sense or but that's well, that's what I see. That's that's a very interesting word, Bishop, because first of all, this guy is this guy is uh if there's a Paul and a Timothy, this is John Maynard's Timothy. Yeah, I get that. And look, John Maynard just said yeah. the church will help fund it if needed. See, that's it's time. Paul. That's it's a time. Paul. Yeah. So they're they're like they walk so close, these two guys. So that's that's powerful. Pretty pretty sharp at three hours and thirty nine minutes still. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh yeah. can I can I say something to, yeah, to all course. the preachers? I had the I, I've had the privilege of traveling around the world. I've been to fifty one countries now. I've also had the privilege of sitting with some of the biggest and the best names in our to use a very awful term, in our industry, our business, whatever way you want to put it. The single greatest voice that ever sowed time and wisdom into my life is Michael Dean Murdoch, the man the world knows as Dr. Mike Murdoch. And I asked him one day, how is it whenever they say go or whenever they say we're ready or when you're in a TV studio, whenever they give you the countdown, no matter what you were doing, no matter what you've been through, no matter what you're moving on to next, in that moment, you just flick the switch and do it. And I said to him, I, I, I want to know what it is because I want to be able to do that in my own ministry. And I'm thankful now that, that I have learned what it was and I'm able to do it. We were in Paris, France, when he told me. And he said to me, son, you need to learn to live in the abiding anointing. And I said to him, Dr. Murdoch, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. And he said to me, I live my life in the abiding anointing. Knowing that because of the relationship I have with him, with our Lord, because of my love affair with the Holy Spirit, it doesn't matter where I am what time it is, how long I've been doing it, because I abide in the anointing, the moment I need it, it's on. And the moment it's finished, God just switches it off. And we as preachers never, ever learn to abide in the anointing. That's why Paul said, be ready in season and out of season. You abide in the anointing that is on your life so that when you need to place a demand on it you can and i want to encourage all of the preachers learn to live in the abiding anointing learn, become so secure in what god has put on you and what god has put in you that no matter when you need it, you can step straight into it. And I want to I wanna 
there's one more thing I want to give all the preachers if there's any preachers left besides John, you and me, Bishop, and it is this. When you are in that place, when you are in the anointing, be very careful about protecting it. Be very, very careful about protecting it. Because in the moment that God anoints you for a multitude, in our inability to protect the anointing, you can dispense the anointing for a multitude on the life of an individual. And uh, I was talking to somebody about this just a couple hours ago. I said to them, you know, when I'm heading into church, I used to walk into the service and I'd shake hands with everybody that wanted to shake hands and I'd greet everybody that wanted me to greet them and <clears throat> then I'd get to the pulpit and quite often it was like the tank was dry. There's no oil in the tank. And I realized that when I began to study the life of the woman with the issue of blood and understand what she went through when she said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I know I'll be healed. Jesus was carrying an anointing to heal the sick. And her determination to get something. What did he tell the disciples? Who touched me? Because virtue just left me. What was he saying? Who touched me? The anointing just left. It just disappeared. And we learned that the, the, the person he was on his way to heal, by the time Jesus gets there, is dead. So he needs a different kind of anointing because the anointing for healing is not the anointing that raises the, 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 the dead. But that's the first time that Jesus is involved in the miraculous, for want of a better expression, where he had no part in it whatsoever. Because he tells a woman, your faith has made you whole. It's the first time a miracle has happened through his life where he had no involvement in the miracle. Yeah. Oh, well. And the reason I'm telling preachers now, protect the anointing on you, is because in that moment, God anoints you for every person you're going in front of. And you never know what the person who shakes your hands is after. You never know what they're pursuing. You never know if that is even somebody that has been sent by the enemy. Yeah, that's true. Good. Yeah. Wow. So I've I've learned to be very, very protective of the anointing, which is why I know when I come into the church service, I, I, I pray that God don't think it's it, it's got nothing to do with me. It's not because I think I'm so special. It's not because I don't want to shake hands or do that. Because I do. I'm that way. I want to touch. I want to hug. But I'm now very, very careful when I know that I'm anointed not to go dispense the anointing for a multitude on the life of an individual. Because just like Jesus did, I then have to go through the process of being refilled, refueled, restored, ready for my requirement to dispense the anointing that I have already dispensed. So, uh, preachers, uh, we have to pay a huge price for the anointing. It's true. Don't ever think we don't. We pay a huge price to carry it. But remember, when God anoints you, you're carrying it for a for, you're carrying it for a people, not just a person. Oh, you're carrying it for a people. So I'm praying that you, to my preachers and those aspiring to be in ministry, please. Become very, very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Become sensitive to his anointing and do everything you can to protect it. And in doing so, you become very, you, you become more sensitive and more aware about protecting your own life to protect the anointing. You protect yourself from, I've, I've done stupid things in my life, Bishop. I really have. Real stupid things that have cost me 
anointing that have cost me <coughs> huge seasons of my life because of my stupidity, because I did not protect what God had put on my life. And it is, I, I want every preacher to know this, and if, if I spend the rest of my life only saying this one thing, right? It, very true, John, very true. But I, I would want to spend the rest of my life telling preachers this. Don't think the anointing on you will last forever. See, Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says, the calling and the gifting of God is beyond repentance or recall. God allowed Israel to have Saul as a king. But when God had had enough, he took his hand from him. And Saul tells Samuel the prophet, walk with me that the people will think I'm still the, the Lord is still with me. Don't ever get to the place where God gets so annoyed with the way you abuse the anointing, the way so that you true. abuse what he's put on you. Yeah. That we have to we have to get a prophet to walk with us so it looks like the Lord is still with us. Protect what God has yeah, put on your life. As quick as it comes on us, it can be leave just as quick. Yeah. Like you right said, right. the calling, the calling is always there. The calling never yeah. leaves. But anointing is a whole different thing. So, that's well, I, I put it, I, I put it like sure. this: the the calling is the 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 power of the uh, of the army, but the anointing is the authority to control the power. And if you ain't got yeah. the authority, it don't matter how much power you got. Mm, yeah. So oh, I don't know why I felt like I needed to say that, but it just came up in my spirit. I felt like I needed to say it, Bishop. So. I don't know, but people are people are receiving it. Can you pray over my friend right here, Brother Clarence? He's yes, uh, from Winnipeg, Winnipeg, Manitoba. And uh, yeah, shut up! I won't say anything to you. He's a Holy Ghost man. Hallelujah. Lord, I I stand you, in agreement Clarence. now. Yeah, come on. For wow. our brother Clarence. Jesus. Oh, God, you know the struggle he's going through. Oh, Father. Lord, there's been days, even in the last few, last seven days, where he's just felt like, God, I just can't keep on. Come on. I just can't go on. Jesus. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't, God, this, this, this is too much. Holy Ghost. Shaka the boss of the Lord, there's been moments where he's cried out, I, God, I just can't do this. Oh, God. This is, this is, I, I can't do this. This is too much for me. You don't know the strain. But God, I thank you that you've put him in a season, put him in, in, where he's being forced to stretch himself, oh, stretch yeah. his faith, stretch his trust. Mm. God, even in the moments when he doesn't see it, you are you are making him better. You are making him stronger. Thank you, Jesus. You are preparing him for the next level, preparing him for the yeah. next season. Wow. And God, it 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 looks at times. Oh, Jesus. It looks at times like you have forgotten. Because we don't see you, but but God, help him this week to understand. You created all that was seen from the unseen. Jesus. You did not make something out of nothing. You said in your word, you created everything that was seen from the unseen. And there is an unseen prosperity wow. in Come his on. life. True. That Come you are on, creating the scene from. There wow, is an wow, unseen wow, wow. breakthrough in his life that you are creating the scene from. God, there is an unseen turnaround happening because he desperately needs a turnaround. Come on, Shabo Soto Kamasa. And you are creating everything he sees from that which he cannot. Wow. But God, I pray. On, that you would just give him the strength to hang on yeah. just a little bit longer. Jesus, to wait Jesus. on you just a, a, to trust you just a little bit further. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. But God, I also ask you, begin to show him the unseen manifesting. Begin Hallelujah. to let him see the things he needs to see, not just in hope and expectation, but in reality. God, there are relationships in his life that need fixing that only you can fix. Jesus. There is a financial situation in his life that only you can fix. <laughs> God, it, it, it has seemed like his entire life was falling apart and it was like it was all happening at the same time and the enemy has literally been trying to crush him like Truth. an olive in the press. Oh. But God let him see, the more you press me, the more oil that will come out. Come on, yeah. The more wow. you press me. Jesus. Oh, gee. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God, I pray today that you open your hand concerning his life that you release the blessings, that you release the healings, yeah, that right. you release the restoration, you release mm -hmm. the renewal, you release the turnaround, you release yeah. the, the open doors, you release the new opportunities. Not piecemeal, God, not bit by bit. He needs to see us suddenly happening. Jesus, that's a lot of me. God, he, ne he needs a whole lot of things to happen suddenly Jesus. he needs a whole lot of things to happen right now oh God. God I pray that you do it I pray that you give him the suddenly that he needs I pray that you give him the turnaround that's needed God wipe out the debts he, he, he doesn't even he's in a position God he can't even wait for money to come just wipe the debts clean Hallelujah. spiritual emotional physical mental financial every area sure. god give him a suddenly every single yeah. area of his life Hallelujah. but lord that relationship's got to be healed swiftly jesus you got to step in god like in the next 24 hours, you've got to step in and fix. That's how suddenly he needs it. That's the kind of suddenly he needs. God, he, by this time tomorrow, he needs, a, he needs to see a turnaround just to keep him. He's just praying, God. Just show, him, just show me something. Just, just one. Just give me something, God. And I pray, God, you do it. I pray, God, you do it. Lord, in the next 24 hours, you Thank do. You. you do what only you can do because what only you can do is always enough. I pray it in the name of your, uh, your son, our Savior, Jesus, the risen Christ. Because you said, God, whatever we ask in that name, you'll give it to us. So I'm holding you accountable to your own word. You're not a man that you should lie. Do it suddenly, oh God. Amen. That's Jesus. Amen. Well, that's great. We're going to shut her down at four hours here, Bish. Praise I know God. you can probably keep going, but save them we, up for We, we should have probably one. shut Glory it down about God. two and a half hours ago. <laughs> I know, but still people people are hungry. It's, it's amazing. Because usually don't, people don't usually say, yeah, well, shut up. Anyways, I'm pretty drunk in the Holy Ghost here. This was a, yeah, I don't even know how to describe this broadcast. Well, I'm, I'm going to, there's a, a lady, Penny, I'm not going to pray for home for you and your daughter. Look me in the eye. I'm not going to pray for home. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell you to do what the scripture says. You better go find the home that you want and you better keep prophesying that home is yours. Yeah. Really? My prayer, it, listen, it's not that I don't want to pray for you. I'll happily pray for you. 
but you need to step into a level of authority in your own life where you understand you carry the same anointing and the same authority that's on my life, that's on Bishop Gill's life and on every believer's life. Go find the home that you want that you can't even afford and tell that thing. And and he is what you need to... Do you know what we need to start doing as believers? We need to stop looking at stuff and going, I can't afford that. You need to go find the stuff that you want when you know you're in the right place with God and tell that stuff. You better come down to the level that I'm comfortable to pay for you. I'm tired of hearing, I can't afford this and I can't afford that. No, no. You, you might want a multi-million dollar home. You better go find it and tell that thing, this is how much I'm prepared to pay for you. And don't be stupid. Be realistic. But it's about time we started calling the things that we want into our life by telling them, I'll pay for you, but I'm going to pay for you at the level I'm comfortable for pay, to pay. And start taking authority. There is a house with your name and your daughter's name written all over it. Go find it. Get a picture of it. Put your hands on it every day. And if you speak in tongues as often as you feel the Spirit is leading... Put your hand on that picture of that house and you just speak in tongues. You watch how quickly it enters your life. Sorry, Bish. Didn't mean to. That's okay. Beautiful. Oh, love you so much. Thank you for your time and your ministry today. I love you. I want, you to, I want you to go. I want you to go, please, just as you, uh, as you, uh, as we're signing off, go to this website, please. And so we want to bless Bishop Kai. I mean, Time is money, so he's four hours. So I, I, we need a lot of money. Bless us, man. Come on, <laughs> glory be to God. You gotta know he never, he never asks me for anything, and uh, he's more than gracious, and he gives us his time. And so, if you could join me in just sewing tonight, that would, or this morning, or this afternoon, wherever you are, that would be a blessing. And uh, we want to send something to him so we can help him a little bit. Glory be to God. So thank you, Bishop. Love you. Get some rest. Love you too, my and, brother. Uh, Thanks for having me. Always yeah, a pleasure to be with you. It's, it's amazing. So uh, Nadia is ready for the fourth watch. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's 3 a.m. in the UK. That's right. Not, yeah, not, that's right. Let's get, that, let's, get that ring. let's get that money so we can get that ring. Glory be to God. That's right, BB. BB sold. Come on. So into that anointing. Jesus' name. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. So thank you. And uh, Brother Clarence says he receives a healing and restoration. Hallelujah. Praise God. So I'm going to put you just in the back, Bishop, and I'll be right with you. Thanks. Love you. Bye. Woo. Oh, wow. What do you say after that? Just so, so, so. What a, what a broadcast. Never done four hour. So there we go. Shaka. And uh, thank you for tuning in with us. Many of you stayed a long time, if not the whole thing. So bless you for for uh, staying that long. But what a what a time of ministry and teaching. And uh, hope you were ministered to by that. And help us out help us out by sewing tonight because uh, we want to get this to Bishop Kai and be a blessing to him. And so thank you so much, Elizabeth. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Nadia, all you Ontario and Quebecers and PEIers, all you Canadians. Happy birthday, or sorry, happy Thanksgiving to you. Um, <clears throat> tomorrow, see, I'm so drunk, I'm not even making sense. And uh, Corrine, we'll see you soon. And many will see Bishop Dewar on Friday on the fourth watch. So thanks for being with us today. And appreciate you tuning in. We'll we'll uh, be back at it on Wednesday night this week. Our normal Wednesday night broadcast. We're on our normal Wednesday and Sunday broadcast now, and it's going to be powerful. So may God continue to ignite your destiny by the power of His Spirit. Thanks for being with us. Look forward to seeing you soon. Mm-hmm.